It's like they're trying to be too meta. You're gonna make them an offer they can't refuse. Yeah, yeah. You can, you can yeah. buy you a drink. You can. But, uh, well, said, well, I mean, he did pick up somebody we know. We sidestepped the question. That technology does not exist. Hey everybody, this is Zach and, and I'm Aaron. And Aaron, uh, welcome to A to Z. If this is your first time listening, thanks for checking us out. A to Z is produced weekly and the show notes can be found at a to z podcast.com or in any of the information boxes or wherever you get it. If you like what you hear, feel free to subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play. We just added Spotify. We got Stitcher. Yeah, we all of them. Yeah, yeah. We you everywhere. Get, you can get the, the new episodes on SoundCloud or mm-hmm. uh, YouTube. Yeah, and you can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at A to Z B M T. You know, you tell them, tell 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 the people about. It. All right. Well, this is pretty cool. We're trying to get different content besides our sort of our long form conversational podcast, where each episode sort of stands on its own and it's based on whatever guests we have, and that's a great thing. But we want to do something fun and different with this, and this is going to be called A to Z Movie Night. Yeah, I said Thirsty's movie line a lot throughout it, but just ignore that. Yeah, we talked yeah. about it a little bit. I mean, we we say we said Thirsty's nothing movie against Thirsty's, yeah, but we said that because we brought on our our good buddy Tim Post to wait, mm-hmm. and he is a pop culture like freak. Yeah, yeah, he's 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 an expert. So he we brought him on because what would end up happening? I actually I, I say that in here. We talked about doing something, and it never never really went through, and then until we came to A to Z. But even though now me and Aaron are doing this thing, I still I, I I had always had in mind to do talk about movies like like the one that we're doing now, the thing. Yeah, we could have picked a, a better inaugural movie, right? Yeah, and it's, it's and it was really classic. it was really it was really revealing, and because I I I listened to the episode and I've still found things that we missed, really, and I've still found points that we didn't get quite right. Hmm. So this was a really fun thing to do, and Tim is just is, because he is who he is, and because how we all get along. It was a lot of fun. You it was know? a lot of fun. It was really natural. and We honestly, all learned something. <laughs> yeah, we all learned, and uh, I really feel like this is going to be just like hanging out with some friends. So, yeah, it really and, is. And the way, we, the way we're going to do this is it's almost kind of like a DVD commentary, uh, sort of maybe like a Mystery Science 3000 type of thing sometimes. So uh-huh. there's going to be a point where we have a countdown and we're going to go, okay, in five, yeah, four, we three, don't, two, one. Yeah, we don't one. really know how it's going to work out just watching the movies. Yeah, it just, means we're going to keep play, them short. And you, you can know. watch along with us. So you can you can turn you can turn the podcast up and turn the movie down and, right. and so have this, fun with this us. Is like our, this is our launch of that kind of style. And if you if you really like it, let us know because I mean, we had so much fun, we'd be willing to do it twice a month, even. Yeah, because it's kind of, uh, this first episode, since it's inaugural, month, it's yeah. experimentation, like it's experimental in nature. So if there's something that you feel like was lacking, hey, let us know. If we dwelled on something you didn't, you know, let us know that too. If you just want to talk shit, that's cool. I don't. Yeah, you know, it's fine. Whatever. I like talking shit. But uh, check us out everywhere that you can. Subscribe, like, comment, please. Yeah, and if you want to comment on what you want the next movie to be, yeah, yeah, tell us that. Like, if you have a cult classic that you think gets gets sure. un- like yeah underloved or we underappreciated. Do have, we do have an A to Z podcast group on Facebook. Uh, we haven't really figured out what to do with it, but if you want to go in there and chime in your opinions, then that would be a good place to start a dialogue. For sure. Um, okay, well, we want, like we said, we want to hear your feedback and enjoy this initial first episode of A to Z Movie Night. Word. Oh, well, I guess we can start with that. Um, this is A to Z Podcast. Uh, I don't know what episode it's going to be, but we are here with our good buddy and uh, friendly bartender at our favorite place to go and, and celebrate whatever, Monday, uh, Tim Postlewaite. Did you say Postlewaite or Postal, Postal, Postal Thwaite? Yeah. Jerry's still out. I'm going to say Postal Yeah, let's all go right. with that. Uh, but hey, man, thanks for coming. Thank you all for having me. <clears throat> Sorry. God. Sorry, I've been... Damn it. <laughs> I don't be coughing today, too. Uh, we can edit all that out. Yeah. 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 Well, <laughs> um, Back to one, people. Yeah. <laughs> we we had we have Tim on uh, for a specific reason. This is a... I guess this would be... You could say, you know how they break the bottle? We're going to break a bottle of Jameson on the ship that is Thirsty's yeah, we're Movie Christ- Night. We're christening. We're christening Thirsty's Movie Night. Uh, I guess that's the title that I had in my head. We never agreed on it, but I'm just going to stick to it. Mm. Yeah, if you guys think of a better idea for a title give it give it to yeah, us sure we'll, yeah. we'll think about it i like their season movie night uh but we we got this idea because actually before me and aaron finally decided to start up a podcast i had been kind of talking and thinking and kind of you know every now and then i'd get the the urge to do something like that and me and tim talked about doing 
this was a while ago. This is probably yeah. over a year ago. Yeah. We talked about doing something like this where we do a movie. We talked about a movie, and I wanted to hang out at Thirsty's, you know, sit in the corner. Right, right. And, uh, and do... Like movie reviews, talk about old school movies, though, and and just kind of do that kind of thing. Well, that was that was one thing too. We we had talked about doing uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine for last year. Yeah, yeah, we've been trying to do this, and uh, so we were trying to do cu- current movies, and it's just. You know we're we're lazy and and, well, and disorganized just, sometimes. So many, there's so, so many reviews about current right. movies. I got there's tired of talking about Last, Last Jedi. Jedi. We, we talked too, yeah, about yeah. doing Last Jedi. And I definitely got, got fatigued. We yeah, all got that. so tired of hearing people talk about it that yeah. you know. And the big thing that we always kind of have in common is just those classic, awesome action horror movies. Uh, you know, yeah, and, culturally, culturally, culturally relevant. Culturally, cult flicks. You know, you know, cult flicks, yeah. Yeah, hopefully you've seen it already, and if you haven't, hopefully this will make you go, right. w- go watch it. But that's that's the other reason we have Tim on, is because Tim is like a... He's like a pop culture fanatic, and he's uh, he's like a pseudo, pseudo history buff yeah. of, of these types of movies. Everything yeah. I learned, I learned at the movies. Yeah, there you yeah. go. But yeah, you know, we always had, we would always have these conversations up at the bar. If only I could do something with all this knowledge to like make and make money off of it. Right. By the way, how much is this gig paying? <laughs> uh, uh, a bigger tip we'll, next time we go to the bar. Shut it down. <laughs> yeah, have your people call our people. So it's all uh, the same people. So we don't we don't exactly <laughs> it's the same people. <laughs> We don't exactly know how this is going to end up in the end, but we we're, have a we're few gonna, ideas. We, we got some ideas, we're, but we're going to play around. We're going to see what's up. And uh, today's movie that we're doing is we're doing uh, the classic thing, not the original and not the new, but but John Carpenter's The Thing. So we're going to, I guess, the format we're going to try today is uh, I got a little, I got a little rant that I wrote down. So I'm going to kind of go through this screed, and y'all can chime in when ready, or if you hear something or have a point. Uh, but I'm going to. Uh, we well we talked about just doing where we sit down and we and we hang out and we talk about a movie. Uh, but, Why don't you press play on that movie so we can well, have hold it going? on? I'm getting, okay, fine. Plus, uh, th- that's the other side is we we want to do it alongside the movie, right? We wanted to do like a play by play like mystery science theater thing. Right. So that's what we're going to do this attempt. We're not really going to spend all our time chiming in on the movie. Not but, necessarily a commentary. But, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Just I'm a about to give a countdown companion piece for when you can start. If you're really lonely, the thing. you know it could feel like. Friends are watching a movie with you. You yeah, just turn yeah. it on. Yeah, right? totally. That's kind of depressing. Okay, You're so never alone. It's three, two, one. Okay, so we decided on the thing. Thing was released in 1982. The heady times. A uh, brief summary for it is: a bunch of scientists camping in Antarctica uh, encounter a parasitic alien thing that assimilates other organisms and then imitates them. Understandably, they become paranoid and conflict ensues as they learn that any one of them can be the thing. Uh, It's significant because it was directed by fucking John Carpenter, and it stars Kurt Russell, right? So John Carpenter did Halloween, Big Trouble, Little China, uh, one of your favorites, right, Tim? Oh, yeah. Uh, Kurt Russell's R.J. McCready, which is a classic... Awesome just action movie. Good <laughs> just 80s a, action movie. It's a good archetype, too. Like. Uh, he's the camp's uh, helicopter pilot, or one of them. Uh, everybody knows who that is, but it also features Wilfred fucking Brimley. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> As, he had diabetes. Yeah, he had diabetes in that. I looked it up. Uh, in 1979, he got diabetes. He's the camp biologist Blair, and he goes absolutely ape shit, and it's fun to watch. Uh, I'm thinking that like all this craziness was probably because of like low sugar. It was like a low sugar attack, you know. That's what. It was. <laughs> yeah, the whole movie is the just from just uh, low hypoglycemia. Sugar. It's a yeah. It's a, a, <laughs> it's a uh, yeah. It, it also features Keith David as Childs, uh, one of the only sensible guys in the film. Uh, he's always the one saying, "This shit is crazy," or like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Uh, <laughs> God damn it! Has everyone here lost their minds? There you go. Yeah. Keith David is a truly epic character actor. You've seen him before. The thing, the thing about character actors, right, is that you you've seen him a million times. It's that guy that was in that one thing. Yeah, like you, you every time you see him, you're and like, you it's love that, guy. that guy though. Yeah, that guy he's cause always because they're that always guy. awesome. Yeah, and and he's been in They Live, which is another, another John Carpenter, Carpenter flick. Yeah. I think I think actually the name is just They now. He changed the name twice. Oh really? I they? think well, no, maybe it was originally They, and now it's They Live. I I don't remember. Well, he's in They Live. Uh, he has that fight with Rowdy Roddy Piper. Like 15 uh, minute fight. Done. They, they, copied it and they copied it in South Park and, and a couple other movies. He's also in Platoon, Armageddon, Pitch Black, mm-hmm. uh, Chronicles of Riddick, Requiem for a Dream, Ass to Ass Guy. And he even provides the voice of the President of the United States in Rick and Morty. Uh, and a side character for Aaron, it also features Jed, 
a wolf Malamute hybrid doggo who acted in this flick as well yeah. as the movie White Fang alongside Ethan Hawke. Wait, that's a, the same dog that was, was in the White same Fang? Dog. He was a famous dog, yeah. Same dog. That's yeah. a good looking dog, too. Yeah. It's a real good looking dog. Very. Yeah. I didn't know that was the same dog in yeah. White Fang. Yeah. It's a damn good actor, too. And, Wait, yeah. that's like, those movies are like eight years apart or something. They're several years it's apart. A, it's yeah. a wolf, yeah. Aaron. <laughs> they live a long time. They're well, actually, that's something that a lot of people don't know is wolves can yeah, live wow. to be up to 20 years old. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And he's a wolf hybrid in Malamute. That's, too, that's so. why I think that uh, my dog is going to live a very long time. Probably like 15, I'll give her he, uh He scared a lot of the actors on the set, too. He was very, the the actor that played the, the kennel guy yeah. spent a lot of time actually getting to know the dogs, like mm. took it real per- serious, and he was like one of the only people that that dog trusted on the set. Like he had to like there's, there's okay a scene, things. There's a hmm. scene where that dog is walking. Walking through the base, he looks one and way. And he's walking through there, and he like he pauses and he closes his mouth. It's m- and it's that 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 like yeah. that it went in like a predator mode, and it's really interesting. Like he, the dog he, acted really well. He for stops this. about to go into one room, turns, looks the other direction, and then go. I mean, it's like this. I, I don't want, know okay, how they got that dog. I watched this movie like that. three or four times over the, since last night, uh, and I can say that it's like. Fantastically acted. This oh, movie yeah. is very really, much so. really, very much so. And it's, it, yeah, I would it's catch little dog. things. I would catch little things every single time. I'm but gonna. Any, I, I need to throw a little PSA out there though for a lot of people because people animal. people like to talk to me. Everyone comes up and they see my dog and they they want to ask me if it's a wolf. I'm like, no, it's Malamute. But PSA of the day: Wolves are not pets. Yeah. I don't care how much you want one. They they wolves are very different from dogs, and uh, they're just not good pets. They're not social. They will hide Very, in the room they whenever you bring someone over. It's not fair. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they'll, they're, they can be good one-person pets, but you won't you won't enjoy it, and then you'll be stuck with a dog for 20 years that you don't like. So Anyway, that's dog, dog, do break, dog yeah. break. Okay, so uh, for them. Going, anyway. on, going on. Last but not least, My PSA. Uh, as far as the people involved, the personnel for this. Uh, uh, well, actually, there's, there's a couple more. Anyway, last but not least, uh, Ennio Morricone did the soundtrack. Or Ennio Morricone. Morricone. Or, did the soundtrack? Uh, he did obviously. He did you know uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, a lot of those Sergio Leone films, and he did uh, even the Hateful Eight. He's yeah, still, and just to chime in, yeah, the, in the Hateful Eight, Quentin Tarantino brought him out of retirement to do that. And towards the end of the movie, and don't catch me lying, but I think it's when Channing Tatum, towards the end of the Hateful Eight, spoiler alert, uh, they reprise one of his bits from this film in the Hateful Eight. It's the exact same thing. He lifted it, and I just thought that was. Maybe Quentin Tarantino doing a little he, uh, like hey, he, he a, incorporated a motif. I'm a fan from, yeah. from the thing. Yeah, yeah. Pulled, pulled it straight out of the film. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so that was a break from John Carpenter too, because he usually uh, does his yeah, own score yeah, on he, like he, a Casio keyboard he, or something. He tours, or he doesn't yeah. tour, but he played like South by. He's played a couple of festivals. Mm-hmm. Uh, he played in Day for Night, I think. Where really? he, oh yeah, you know what? I remember seeing the poster for that and being like, "What?" Yeah, he got he. It's like he's old as shit. He just wears like a white t shirt to his knees. He looks like a. He looks like he's in an electro pop band or some shit. Shout out and, to our friend Jackson White. He brought a. He got a vinyl. Really? Of all of yeah, Carpenter's wow. releasing vinyls now of like and supposedly producing new yeah. music and stuff you know, now. He does it all in that Yamaha. Jackson, he's a he's a Yamaha horror flick buff it. as well. Yeah, yeah, big big time. Um. Okay. So so, John Carpenter film. You get who's in it. Um, it's 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 well staffed. Cheating God, he just bitch. I always this Cheating is something bitch. I wondered Cheating about. Bitch. This is what I wondered about is he just poured the the drink into He just poured uh J and B into the probably the only source one of the only yeah, sources just of entertainment. Up. He just blew up everybody's little game station like, Yeah. That's because they, they're establishing early that? on in the movie that no, he's they, the character yeah. that doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. He, his cabin is out he's there by himself. Boy. Okay, yeah. so he stays out by himself solitude. I have kind of a surprise there was a reason that they were talking about the podcast at Miller's Liquor uh, because he poured a drink of <laughs> oh hey JB. I'm glad I didn't buy it <laughs> and Tim Tim brought a bottle of Jameson he said I almost bought J&B and I was like fuck please don't uh, I kind of hope that you did and then we had two bottles of J&B that's hmm. fucking funny but I got I got the the the, the scotch whiskey <laughs> That he's got uh, his that, hand that right now. That he's got now. his hand right now. That oh, yeah. Kurt Russell uh, has throughout the entire film. Well, we got to drink some of it. Shit. So, yeah. So I, I felt like that would be a poignant <laughs> addition to <laughs> that's this. That's perfect. Yeah. That's fucking funny. Uh, so that's the other star of the movie is JMB, and he's here with us today. Um, uh, so Cultural History was released in 82. Uh, it was, it's a cult film, right? 
was not well received. Not at well the time received because uh, it came e. out two, two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Two and and E.T. E. was this big friendly alien. It uh-huh. took the whole world by storm. Everybody loved it. Everybody fell in love with Spielberg and all of that. So two weeks later, this comes out. Very dystopian. Same yeah. Flavor. Very scary. Yeah, very dystopian. Very not cool. And it obviously, you know, doesn't do well. <laughs> so same day as Blade Runner as well. Uh, bad reviews at first. Uh, but now it's a lot, of, a lot of lists you'll see. It's one of the greatest cold horror really, really greatest horror films of all time and a lot of top 10 lists mm-hmm. yeah a lot of top 10 lists uh it was written uh, it was based on a science fiction novella written by john w campbell in 1938 a lot of classic sci-fi started this way who goes there um, yeah it, yeah and it it's it's been, like a novella is like a short novel or long story a lot of what is like quintessential like classics like sci-fi started as like articles in a in a in a Boy Scout magazine, yeah, or yeah, or like science journals. science fiction journals. Yeah, they were just they were just fiction inside of a science magazine, the sci-fi, you know, and and that's what they would start. They put them together, they put out a book, and people would come and make movies about them. Uh, sci-fi god Isaac Asimov, who you know he wrote the basis for iRobot and Foundation, he wrote Foundation, and, and yeah, an epic, yeah. epic uh, writer. He called Campbell the most powerful force in science fiction ever. Uh, Campbell also helped launch the career of science fiction author L. Ron Hubbard and played a key role in the initial promotion of Dianetics, which is pretty shitty. That was the bad thing that came but out of all this. Interesting all the same. Hey, man, all our, all our heroes have flaws, right? Uh, but that's a little bit of a backstory. It's considered a cult horror movie, uh, and the reason we're talking about it is because I guess maybe that's what we need to figure out. Is why, why are we, we talking about Why are we talking it? about yeah. this movie? Uh, why? Well, I mean, I think that speaks for itself, the fact that there's three dorks Doing yeah. a podcast over this movie is is self evident. That speaks for itself. But uh, so this this scene right here always gets me because this guy like the the captain clumsily plunges that handgun through yeah, a window kinda, and then shoots a man in the right eye between away. the eyes. Yeah, I'm like God, that is, he is a marksman. Anyway, right between sorry. the eyes. Um, Still got that bottle of J and B. And you know what's funny is this label right here has not changed ever. Uh, hey, do you, do you want to do a J and B break? Yeah, let's let's take a little. J&B. Let's take a little. Uh, let's do it. Uh, you want to just. Drink it from the bottle like uh, old... Uh, yeah, yeah I grab think it by the neck like old R.J. Mac, McCready. man. Come on, Mac. Just like that's that's what they're drinking at the end. Yeah, so, that's yeah. the last drink. Child, they're passing it back and forth. Childs passes it to him. Yep. Drinking out of the same bottle. I hope neither one of y'all are the thing. Cause, or maybe I'm the thing. Maybe well, I'm missing my earring, so... Yeah. You know. Ooh! If I was in, in Antarctica, that'd probably be enjoyable. Actually, I'm sure it would. Yeah. I don't like scotch. Ugh. Yeah, it's not really a yeah. It's a sipper, not a shooter. Oh well. I bought the bottle. We're Ooh. gonna have to down it. Now this little <laughs> bit of trivia right here. If some people don't know the the It TV series in 1991, the guy that plays the dog handler was um, Richie, who oh, uh, shit. slits his wrists. Yeah, in the in. Yeah, he writes it on oh, the he's wall the older of the bathroom. Richard. Oh, yeah. He writes older. in his own blood. Yeah, in the older. Yeah, that's him right there. Okay, so now we've taken our J&B break. Uh, let's see why we picked this film. Uh, why Why did you... What is it about this movie that, that I guess, clicks into to, to what you love about it and, and everything? Like well, that? I guess I'd have to start with... I, I vividly remember the first time I watched this. I was living in Hot Springs, Arkansas at the time, so I was probably... 14 maybe watched it yeah yeah oh i'm a renaissance i've been all over uh like johnny cash said um but i watched this during the middle middle of the day but i watched it by myself and this movie was one of the few movies that i had to like pause and go outside and like collect myself like you know the 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 cpr scene yeah blew my fucking mind yeah. and i just it just stuck with me i'd never seen a movie like you know this movie, before you know what movie was that for me what? starship troopers really it was just it was just too much and i it made me like sick yeah, I, had to walk out. I had to leave and yeah. I, I, I was probably like 10 11 but it was just way too much it i had was, to walk out of the theater yeah i had never seen anything like because this was before cgi and everything so it looked real it was all everything they did was in frame and and it it just flipped me, man. I didn't I didn't know how to. I was like, how the fuck did they do that? Like special effects. And I shout out to Rob Bottin, the guy that did this. Yeah. And oh, I'm well, say I was going to mention him at the beginning. Yeah. Read, he, this kid down. was 19 years old at the time. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought he was 23. He uh, well, I think we got hired. I mean, yeah, hired maybe, at 19. Maybe, he probably came out whenever he, he was 20. Yeah. 
just did something that I've never seen done since. I mean, they used it, bubble gum and wax and and just weird like low right. budget shit, and it I've never seen anybody able to duplicate. No CGI could ever, you know. Yeah, on the well, so on the break on the break we were saying how I, uh, we were you can't like eat and watch those scenes. Yeah, you know, because they those really movies. they trigger something yep. in your head. This is one of those movies. Sometimes when I'm eating, if this movie creeps into my head, I I lose my appetite. You know, it's and Stan Winston actually came in during the dog kennel scene, which is another. Just what the fuck scene? Yeah, that scene's actually going to be coming up. That soon. that yeah, your, our first introduction to the thing is just if you're not ready for it, like I can't imagine people in the theater when that started happening. Just like yeah, just I don't I wouldn't have been able to handle it. I would have been running out of the theater. I mean, it wasn't the first time you'd seen. Was it the first time that that those that that I guess kind of gore or that level of of, of effect was in theaters. Well, there was there was Ridley Scott's Alien in '79, which was three you know three years earlier, but it didn't have this it wasn't level. Like that. I nothing think the, like this. I think yeah. the I think the first example of a a, a really well done practical effect was what was it American Werewolf? I think yes. that, I think that was the that, that was like the origin. Yeah, that transformation. Definitely. That that was probably like the original. That's yeah. a that's another movie with that transformation scene in American right. Werewolf, and that was like that was I, like I a used turning to, point. That was a turning point in cinema, I used uh, to, I used to and and it, it probably was a bad thing, honestly. But it was a turning point in cinema where people started getting a yeah, little bit more spoiled. Well, no, no, these these special makeup effects guys started yeah. trying to compete with each other. Exactly, yeah. American Werewolf came out, and they're like, okay, we got who's going to one up that, you know? And it's became a competition, and we got a lot of great film and a lot of great. Yeah, it was stuff. an arms race. Almost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, American Werewolf in London. Rob Bottin before this had done The Howling, which had another really cool right. scene in it. Yep. Came yeah. out the year before. That's another one. So this movie, okay, th- it's great, and there's okay, there's a monster. I love the, I always love the idea of. And I think Rob Bottin was actually the one that pitched the the thing can be anything. Yeah, it's it's a Bettini, single Bettini cell. Bettini pitched that. Yeah, yeah single, single cell, every single cell, cell is its own. So every creature that it's ever duplicated throughout the universe, it can be an amalgamation of that or whatever. It is just this hybrid, and it can hide in you and duplicate you perfectly. Yeah. So the reason they the the monster thing, they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. What brought Carpenter to it was the paranoia aspect of it. Right. Of that you don't know. There's a monster among us. It's kind of like Ten Little Indians or, you know, uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Like, the paranoia comes in because there's a killer amongst us yeah. and we don't know who it is. Uh-huh. And it could be any of us. Well, that's a, that's a really classic way of, of storytelling whenever it's a mystery is a whodunit. Yeah, right? but this, this basically case, can't kind of be yeah. a whodunit, but it, it's it, it, everybody. Well, I, I, was wa- I, wa- I was watching it and it reminds me of we had to watch in class one day and in, in, in a college class to take. We had to watch Angry, Twelve Angry Men and do uh, roles dynamics uh, of groups. So some people are this type of leader, this type of leader. Some right. people are this kind of detractor, this kind of detractor. And this is all, this has the same kind of format as like Twelve Angry Men does, because it's yeah, so a bunch of different personalities. And McCready is definitely a reluctant hero. McCready, he, he comes McCready up from has, the because he didn't want to be the hero. Yeah, he just gets kind of forced into it. Yeah. This is the same we were talking about earlier. This dog when he comes down the hallway right here. Yeah, that this he does, is just incredible. It's really Where he pauses, looks right over there, and looks in the room. It, it's the one so, okay, scene where he closes yeah. his mouth. It's like right, and then the shadow that looks so. And that, that's right that's what well, that's when the paranoia. Even, they even did a they even did so a, uh, menacing. Well, this right here, like that shot. Okay, yeah. the guy the guy turns around and looks at the dog. Yeah. So that's like who was that? Right. That's the first person, obviously, to get infected. Right. The dog goes and gets a no, bone. No, so you, know, you know you know who first got infected? Who the dog ran up and started licking on that guy's face. Yeah, but I don't think that's that might have been a mistake. They may not have thought about that because that sure? definitely that definitely would have we done need to, it. We need to figure out who that might be when that guy up. dies. They yeah. never, they, but they never really let's exactly not, let's explain. Not, let's not give it away. We'll wait for that moment. They, yeah. don't, they don't exactly explain how you get quote air quote infected in this either because usually you get consumed. It's not like a it's not like a vampire that's sucking your blood. Like the monster literally consumes you. It bursts open. Grabs you by your entirety and consumes almost you. ingests you and then yeah. spits. It's kind of like an invasion of the body statue, right. kind of I don't, thing. I, and then it, it, it doesn't. Yeah. But that's the question. Yeah. If if it can, well, do, it if it consume, can duplicate it you. Well, I mean, you saw the the readout on there where where the cell. 
Mm. Yeah, I saw that. It goes yeah. inside the cell and it expands outward. Right, but that's a one to one. But it does a one to one ratio in in that sort yeah. of that mic. So one foreign cell will take over one, but then they don't. Well, that's uh, you know that's that's the thing. That's why that's why. That's but how, how fast it, acting is that for one cell in a body of trillions to replicate? It's not. You it's know? what could spread very quickly. Okay, so that's why McCready comes up with the blood test plan because it, it does do that if it gets you alone. Right. But it only takes one drop of blood or drop of sweat. A cell. Or yeah, just yeah. one. That's all it needs to get on you. Hmm. That's why they that's why they say everybody should for prepare their own meals and I suggest we eat out of Oh, right, cans. right. That's true. Yeah, you're so, right. Absolutely. So the re- the paranoia in this, the the reason one of the reasons I think this movie was so relevant or maybe people didn't like it or were scared of it at the time. This is 1982 when this came out. The paranoia and who's who and who can we trust? We, what was going on at that time? AIDS was just coming out. Yeah, it yeah. was. Yeah. AIDS was a new thing at the time where the guy sitting next to and you also, could have it also and you the, wouldn't know. Do you, think, you, do you think that was what detracted from it or why it was No, so, that's what drew that's Carpenter why, to it. He, he said, he always said he uses oh, film. So, like, he, the basis of it is. He like, uses film as kind of an allegory or, like, you know. The AIDS epidemic, because it was a fucking epidemic at the and time. No one, no one really knew either. Like nobody the, knew the, how you got it. The the Reagan administration was yeah. really suppressing the information of it. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. You didn't know how, how. They didn't talk about it at all. You didn't know how anybody got it, and there was it was symptomless for such a long time right. that the guy sitting next to you could have it. You didn't know, so that's what he kind of the guy behind you. you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or the female. I don't think it works that way here. All right. We'll have a talk about that later. Okay. Well, we already did an episode about it, so. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did we? No, well, about pegging, anyway. Did we? <laughs> well, we mentioned it. Oh, yeah, yeah we did. Yeah, you're right. Hey, you're right. Swedes. Yeah. You're right. They're Norwegians. They're Norwegians, Jack. Oh, yeah, yeah. He keeps calling them Swedes. Hey, what's the difference? Finns, Swedes, Norwegians? It's all the same. This is where they come. And this is where I do have to give credit to the the sequel that they did. Because this whole setup, the, all the stuff where they go back to the Norwegian camp. Oh yeah, absolutely. They, well, it's not it a sequel, later, the prequel, but yeah, yeah, prequel. Yeah, excuse me, yeah, yeah. Prequel. It's re. I, I honestly, except for the overuse of CGI, I thought the prequel was pretty good, and it's a good companion piece. I thought, I thought it was too. Yeah. Uh, one thing about it was, um, excuse me. <clears throat> one thing about it was, I had I had read a lot of stuff. I was really hyped for whenever the thing 2011 came out. So I read up a lot about it. it. I liked it too. And uh, one thing is, they try to make practical effects at every time they could, but yeah. a lot of it, a lot of it, ended up getting cut out in the last version. And I was really disappointed. But well, watching this as many times as I had, I uh, I kind of I, I was going to go watch the the 2011 version probably after sometime this week. Have, Just, have you ever? I've seen it. Uh, I, saw, I watched it a couple of times too. I think they kind of added a little bit to the mythology yeah, they did. a little bit. Yeah, they embellished, but you know, it's, it, I thought I liked it. It got panned. It just like the thing did. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's as good, you know, it was Blade well, Runner, the second Blade Runner is better than the first Blade Runner, but I agree. No, I agree. It's a bold statement. No, I mean, I, I will. It's a factual statement. When you're talking about expanding on the mythology and stuff yes. like that, yes, it was. It was. It was the most faithful sequel I could. Yeah. you could. And it expanded on it and it stayed most, true. And, and it was sincere. And nothing was shoehorned in. Like they didn't shoehorn shit in. This is my top three sequels there. of all time. Easy. It's it's one of the rarities of a uh, sequel being better. Than first, in my opinion, kind of like Godfather Two or Terminator you know, Two. Terminator Two. Yeah, yeah, and I did say in one episode that uh, that I didn't agree with your Godfather Two, but I watched it. Not. And yeah, you, House Two, good. the second story. <laughs> Emmyville Horror Two. Tremors Two wasn't bad. Come on. Did you ever see uh, you know, Tremors like Three? There's another one coming out now too. Is it really? <laughs> it's like Tremors Ten? Oh my god! You know, know another. All right, but that's another. Is that's that, kind of a note back no, to I would like, love to do Tremors. B B horror movies go that. But this. is that what it's? Is that what our? Is that what this is co- to be considered? B horror movies? Or? No, I, I this this is thing. Well, neither one of those. No, are B I think movies. this this movie was ahead of its time. Yeah, it just. Yeah. It, I was. I wrote down. It looks like it. It looks like it was made in the nineties. Yeah, people just weren't ready for this yet. Aside from people's hairstyles, it does look like. Yeah. Hair stores, like the, the way you gotta love shot. Kurt Russell's hair and yeah. that big old hat and that beard. Oh my god! Come on. But wait, I'm, I was gonna go back. So another thing that got me really hyped for doing this kind of overall period is uh, I don't know if it was you or Bo or whoever shared that uh, the Tremors trailer the other day on on Facebook. But man, that thing got me so hyped for for watching like right. Old movies. Yeah, I watched it. I was yeah, like, oh my god! Yeah. People yeah, watched Tim, it. Tim, yeah, yeah, Tim posted the original Tremors trailer, and I was just like missing old trailers. Shit, got yeah. me hyped, dude. Like, I was missing the trailer, go, like in yeah. a world. Yeah, you know, like I, 
Was, Earl so, and David are trying to get out of perfection, <laughs> and they left one day too late. <laughs> and craziness ensues in Tremors. Yeah, in Tremors, coming to a theater near you. But so it, this, yeah. right, okay, this, okay, to if anybody that's watching the movie along with us, they're they're watching all this burned bodies outside the Norwegian camp. This is just a beautiful piece of sculpture yeah. right here, this thing. I mean... It's charred. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's it's grotesque and disgusting, but the creativity that went into this and how they did it, it's just... It holds up. I have, I don't know anything that... Yeah, it's a mangled amalgamation that. of different people's yeah, you bodies. Even, you go, yeah, they're all kind of, look yeah. like, kind of like an arm there. Yeah. It's it kind of looks like an arm leg thing. It's pretty arm impressive. Thing, yeah. It's pretty impressive what they were able to do that long ago and... I think I think that's why we're still talking about this movie all these yeah. years later. Is that it holds up? It's 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 timeless. There's not like period pop not music really in it. Cheese. Yeah, it's not dated. Yeah, it's it could no, take it's, place it's, today. It's timeless. It's timeless. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it could be taking place today, and it wouldn't. Yeah. Man, look at that dog just watching. One of the very God. few, uh, you know, all male cat, all, all male ensemble cast. Wow. They had to change that for the prequel, but yeah. Yeah, which I didn't like that in the prequel. I'm sorry. I don't know, but I like Mary Elizabeth Winston. Yeah, she's yeah. She's my, I liked the dynamic of just lady. you know all Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, you know that yeah. kind of thing. Uh, I was going to ask you, Tim, if you know, do you know where the filming took place in this movie? I was just now thinking about it because it's supposed to be Antarctica, and it definitely looks like it. But they, I was wondering, for, I believe a lot of it actually was no, really? not Antarctica. No, no, no. Excuse me. No, Alaska. they were in Alaska. Oh, yeah. Alaska. Okay. There was a mining town. So up like there. Prudhoe Bay or something. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. There was yeah. a mining town up there that was open for a very short period of time and got closed down and they just lucked out that there has been roads had been kind of built up to this. Yeah. Know, it's like a little area. bit of infrastructure and they had to helicopter to the sets every day. Hmm. And they like literally had to go in on helicopters. To Do you go from know their Alaska? Hotel. Hey, isn't that, Yes, that's Isn't my that dog's name. Voice? Oh yeah, that's uh. I'm from Juneau, Alaska, man. That's how we do it up here, brother. Tell you what. <laughs> anyway, that's old David Cross. Yeah. Saying? Well, their their helicopter pilots were like ex Vietnam chopper pilots. So these dudes were like crazy. Like they were flying <laughs> drunk all the time and everything. And they were talking about how like they would come get in there and like one they, there's a famous story where they were like the guy's like halfway there, and. uh they was like, oh, shit, we're about to run out of gas, and we're going to have to just land the helicopter and spend the night in the helicopter. Wow. Salute. Prost. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, it was. They were up there, and it was. There was. It was. It was, it was dangerous a little bit. Uh, yeah, I man. believe Kurt I Russell it. actually did get a crash course on how to actually fly one fly of those choppers, too. Yeah. Well, they weren't. I mean, they're not super complicated. So. There's good old windows. There's just I mean oh, yeah, all these actors. As, as, I mean they they all have they all have a specific thing. The yeah. radio, this is the windows of radio. They, they, they're not yeah. developed with a backstory, but they're they're so they're, well each played. character is so unique it's too. So unique. Yeah, they have a niche. Like they all found and out. And they all how have to, completely different personalities and, and aggressiveness course, and all that. The guy that plays El Capitan. I mean, I'm sure you've Where's seen him. Like he was in. He was in Babe. No, that wasn't the guy in Babe. That was different. What's he doing here, though? Is he just a he's, guy with He's a gun? just kind of a military presence yeah. okay. in case yeah. they start going crazy. You know, yeah, he's the man yeah, with yeah. the gun, basically. Uh, I was going to... So, so real gun. quick, real quick, I was going to tell you that uh, Driving's Day on the road, you remember You know the, the crazy guy that was in the bar the other night? The the, mm-hmm. the tweaked out guy? I saw him right right here, like right in the, the median by... Um, uh, just walking down the road? Yeah, just like literally right here. He was walking down the road in the grassy middle, like by Papa John's, and he I, he he was throwing rocks at cars, dude. He was literally like he or pine cones or something, but he had him. Talk about the homeless like, a lot we, on this. Can he we was like pause into a smoke break. Is that a thing here? We can edit all this out, right? Yeah, we can just edit that. Well, <laughs> I no, I was I was I'm I'm telling you, and That's then crazy. and then like so he would he, so he's walking and he passed and he uh and he uh so he, he was walking. And a tree brushed him. He was like, huh, huh. and he literally did the same thing he that did at the bar. That get hit by a car. I'm calling anyway, it. Anyway. I'm calling it now. Anyway, I just wanted to tell you before I forgot that I saw him and he was even crazier. <laughs> He's just getting crazier. <laughs> He's just getting crazier. So they watched, like, okay, what, another one of these movies, like, okay, if, if you've seen this movie, you're listening to us. The the special effects in this is just nuts. We're go back to Rob Bottin. Uh, you got. I gotta say it. Look it up. It's on YouTube. I checked it earlier. There's an hour and a half documentary about this film. If you're a fan of this, it's a treasure trove. It's a gold mine. It's called Terror Takes Shape. And they enter, when you when you are introduced to Rob Bottin, you will um, you will immediately fall in love with this dude. Yeah, He's so energetic and like crazy. Like the way he tells stories about how it all happened and went down. 
it's it's worth it just itself. He kind of and then of course uh, Nalls the the cook. The guy that's always riding around on the mm-hmm. roller skates. Mm-hmm. That was obviously the dude from the show Punky Brewster. If anybody's <laughs> old enough to remember fucking Punky Brewster, uh, that was the guy that was in that. That's a little bit of useless knowledge for you. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. <laughs> Oh shit! It just clicked. <laughs> yeah. You, okay. I just I just realized what I was looking at. <laughs> In case you're wondering where they're all disappearing to. Yeah. At least they're not getting broke. Here comes just the, here comes the quintessential scene. Oh yeah. That this, this and and like we were talking about earlier. Kennel, like, Come on, Jim. They obviously these dogs. It just it hurts me every time. Oh yeah. How first of all how we, they got this dog to just walk in so slowly like that. And keep the other dogs down. It's masterful. Oh no! I, well, I mean, they can they, they, they you can train dogs. Well, yeah. I mean, I know you could train, but it's just it's incredible the the self control in these animals. I mean, I'm not surprised that you said the same dog was in fucking the thing with Ethan Hawke because mm-hmm. it, it makes sense. I mean, this dog just sits there so silently. It's just it's you know this else. this dog. Now that you said that, I mean, I watched this when I was a kid, but maybe this had some sort of weird. Um, impact on me where I wanted a Malamute, which would be really strange, but yeah. That one's a that one's a husky. Those those two. So those all, eyes. All, all the other ones are huskies, and it's a it's just a oh oh. I guess my, oh this, man, damn! This, oh oh. <laughs> oh, it just. It As tongued the, its own skull off. This is pre Stranger Things right here. That's, it's so oh creative. Oh god! It's like a demogorgon. Yeah, see, this was the scene when I was eating lunch. Right. Oh man. And the worms. And you that's, all the tendrils. Yeah. yeah, that right there where it's biting the face. I don't think that's fence. a real. Metal it can't fence. be real. It's probably it's, like it's, it's probably like, like licorice or they something. They probably put something you know? sweet oh, on. Yeah. He's just like they call it candy glass. Like yeah. when people jump through plate glass windows in movies. Right. That's what I'm saying. It's probably like some sort of licorice type stuff. So yeah, because how did they get the dog to? want to do that yeah yeah i mean it obviously is scared but yeah and it's obviously not wire yeah that that always see they're, they're squirting this dog that, like, see this right here when it's run back i'm like oh, that just kills me every time eh. it i mean i know it's not it doesn't look like the they're really hurting them Phil, it, Phil, it, it's forever. obviously not hurting the dogs but that dog doesn't know what the fuck's going on that's I how mean. my dogs are every time i give them a shower that dog doesn't know that that's <laughs> fake you know yeah and also that dog's looking at like some weird fuck intergalactic spider monster you know, I bet that's really scary for a dog. I wonder if they ever had problems with like the dogs trying to attack the, you know, their. Oh, it's probably attacked the. It's stuff. probably attacked the sculptures. Yeah, you have, yeah. You, you have any? You have any pets? No, my parents have a dog that I. Have you? You have some. You have some horror horror movie masks and Halloween masks. Yeah, just wear a mask. Wear a mask oh, around your dog and see what yeah. happens. It's it's. it's they are. It's hilarious. Happy. Yeah. Oh no no no! Okay, my parents' dog. That dog has fallen in love with me. It's a great dog. Yeah. It's very. I mean, we've bought it a lot. I, for some reason, though, I have this black, just plain black hat. When I wear that hat, it doesn't recognize me. Yeah. yeah. I walked to my parents' house the other day. He was out in the backyard. He could see me through the window, and he was barking at me. I took the hat off, and he stopped barking. Yeah, the way dogs perceive uh, reality is a little different than Yeah, it's, than it was, we. it's crazy. Did he just break a fire alarm with a can of Budweiser? Yep. Fuck yeah, because he's R.J. fucking McCready. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he only had that Budweiser just to break that, because he, he's been drinking he JB. Yeah, he yeah. he's been drinking no Budweiser. He drink that piss water. Yeah, because he handed off his J&B to the other dude earlier. <laughs> Mac was a flamethrower. He was what? That's what he said. Now move. <laughs> it's just pretty incredible what they did with this. And this this was um, this was no he had done Escape with New York in Escape from New York with Kurt Russell before right. this. this was one of five films yeah. they did yeah. together uh, Escape from New York The Thing Big Trouble in Little China they actually there was a TV movie where Kurt Russell played Elvis if you've never seen oh it, yeah I remember one of the most convincing yeah. portrayals yeah. of Elvis Very much so. in the world I never would have thought it and then they oh. did Escape from L A. Mm-hmm. I would like to make a point that this is probably one of my favorite times in a movie where there has been there has been a an an actual logical use for there being a flamethrower there. Yeah. And yeah. for them to use it. 
Yeah, they're like, okay, they're in the Antarctic. They, they of course, they, they would have to a clear snow. Burger. Yeah, yeah, clear yeah, yeah. snow, There's warm up, reason. warm up machines, right. all kinds of stuff. Yeah, yeah. get snow it's off. Not just a, it's not just a, yeah. a plot device or anything. I mean, that, it is a plot device. Uh, that kills him when he uh, shoots that, it. And then Clark, Clark, so that part, Clark uh, freaks out. That part in the very beginning of the scene where we just saw the thing and it looked really shiny, it looked kind of shiny and glossy. Uh, that this this scene right here, this was shot after like. Stan Winston Bateen, came Bateen in. was like sick or something. He was sick. He like, and Stan, yeah, he the, kinda, leg, the legendary Stan and then Winston. Stan Winston did this scene. Yeah. But, oh, really? Yeah, that's yeah. why it looks different. Like this you is can, the scene. Oh, yeah, because yeah, the arms are a lot more detailed. Yeah, literally. Yeah. It look well. It's it's not that they're more detailed. It's just a completely different look. They're it's shiny a different look and, to it. and glossy yeah. and. Uh, and the other, if, if like, doesn't the other know, ones are really matte. It Stan, looks like Stan you know. Winston, the guy we're talking about. He created the design for the Predator. Uh, yeah. The Alien Queen, H.R. Giger obviously did the Z- original Xenomorph, Epic. but Stan Winston did the Alien Queen, Predator, the Terminator, uh, Jurassic Park. I mean, the list goes on. Yeah. Well, it's not y'all say that. I noticed that this, in all the other... Uh, this always killed me. They put out the fire way too quick. Yeah, yeah. I'd let that thing burn. <laughs> he hits while. it, and then they yeah. rush in with the fire extinguishers. I'm like, fucking let that fucker burn, burn for a few minutes. It looks different. That would only burn its epi- <laughs> epidermis. Burn yeah. yeah. Uh, he had it, third degree burns. He's not dead. In this scene, it, it <clears throat> takes on more forms with like claws and like a weird. Plant you see some thing. of the other things yeah. that's replicated, and in the, and in the other in, in the other scenes, it usually just takes on human forms. Well, it takes on human uh, kind of arachnophobes because that's just what yeah. it's a bunch yeah. of different yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So like uh, I don't the, know. At the end, when what they've always called the Blair monster at the end. Oh yeah, the big. The, big you guy. still see dogs coming yeah, out of yeah, it and yeah. stuff and other things that it's it's because it can you know it's. One cell had still retains that memory. Well, one thing, one thing that's really funny, and I, I'm See, never really all touching uh, it and shit. And so, so I've never really actually thought about this until just now. But if this were a real world scenario, and this was a an assimilation monster, and it assimilated a human, it would actually basically have the DNA for everything that came before humans. So it would have fish, you know, like it just small mammals. It would, it would know how to arrange it. We know how to arrange it, but it would have well, all that. Well, that's why it always so, looks so grotesque, because yeah. it can't really piece one thing right. together. It's, it's 90, just ninety percent of our uh, genome sequence is actually like predecessor genes, so it's think, stuff that we don't even use. I think this was the scene that I always like with when this scene pops into my head. If I'm eating, I'm I'm done. What in the world is that? Oh, that's the. Dog, yeah, it's the some dog. Dog faces in there, yeah. Yeah, they they end up cutting. Uh, they end up like you can cut to sort of like the the core, and it's whatever it took on first. Yeah, you know? it was trying to. Yeah, this was saying. Yeah, it was, it was dog's mandible. It right wasn't there. finished replicating the dogs. Right. He was trying to digest them. I was trying to digest them. I'm Wilford Brimley. I just got diabetes. I always think about the. He Send was me a, out here to Antarctica to find the cure for diabetes. He was in a movie with John Claude Van Damme called Hard Target. Yeah, Hard Target. Where he was does a, a shit. Hor- but he does a horrible oh, Cajun accent yeah. the whole damn movie. I love that movie though, Doc. <laughs> I love that movie. It's, new, it's that's it's one know, of my favorite. You know John Woo, right? You know yeah. John Woo directs yeah, yeah. that. Were there doves. It's in, yeah, there was doves. Well, there was a whole uh, action scene in a warehouse that did nothing but store uh, Mardi Gras parade floats. So it's like the whole action scene is shotguns and kicks. And like all these ex- like exploding was Wilford floats. doing kicks? And no, nah, he was shooting a shotgun. Shoot a bow and arrow. Right? And a bow and arrow, yeah. yeah. So he would like shoot it and this this parade float would just blow up. And See, this, like is, doves and this is where the paranoia first starts in because how, you know, how... You know, is anything strange about that dog? Yeah. Nope. How, long, how long were you alone with that dog? Because now that, now that Blair, this is where yeah. Blair starts, that's why he goes crazy because he's right. the first one, he's the scientist. So he's the first one that realizes, okay, if he was trying to replicate those dogs, why wouldn't it be able to replicate us? Right. So now he's together. he's the first one that starts going, okay, I can't trust anybody here. Quarantine. How long were you? How long were you alone with that dog? I don't know. Why are you looking at me like that? Yeah. That's why I love this movie is because it's it's a, you don't it's know a if he's classic the thing concept. Right now. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. it's universal paranoia. Yeah. There's the old saying: you put more than three people in a room, you turn off the lights, they'll start coming up with ways to kill each other. <laughs> Did people start picking sides and you know who you know who against who and that's that's so I think he turned the lights out that may be very pessimistic but I think that's kind of human nature some people well that's probably why this film still resonates yeah. I mean this is this, this story is, this is a natural thing I mean of, every everything's the same so we have like seven stories in western culture yeah you know and they're all based on you know story Jesus and heroes yeah and all that shit. 
good against evil uh who's who there's the yeah paranoia yeah probably part of it really i i don't even think the what really scares me or at least used to scare me when i was a kid about this movie wasn't so much the um the paranoia aspect i mean i i felt it but what scared me is the same thing that scares me deeply and, and more than anything else because murder doesn't doesn't frighten me right like i'm not I have a kind of a weird thing where I'm not afraid of like people at all, which is really stupid because it's the most dangerous thing. But uh, being like transformed is horrifying. Body core. horror, yeah, body yeah. horror. Well, that goes back to Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. Yeah, 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 yeah. that There's idea. Of, right? So we yeah. don't, we don't, we honestly like being killed isn't really that scary, but being transformed into something that you no longer recognize in the mirror—that's yeah. that's true mutilation. Horror. That's, that's I think, true I, horror. I think that's man's basest. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you don't exactly. You become something that you, and then yeah. and then like you know. That's why people have body image issues right. and all that stuff. I mean, exactly. that's, that's a base. Yeah, natural and like fear. beyond that, being assimilated and like well, being transformed if, if, is if can, incredibly what, terrifying. Well, that's because they don't exactly know how this thing works. And there's okay if it replicates you so perfectly, then they ask the question later on. If I was a thing. Yeah. Would I know I'm the thing? No, you wouldn't even know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, would I? That, and that's still kind of like up in the air. Like, is rec, is Deckard a replicant? It's up right. in the air. Yeah. Would, if it per, if it, it replicate, because some of them when they transform, they almost seem surprised by it. Yeah. Like yeah. like they don't even know until it ha- starts happening that right. they are the thing. And like, do you retain any kind of little bit of your own consciousness? Yeah, that, that are you like trapped inside there's your own scene, mind? There's that scene being where, controlled uh, like a puppet. But or, or they, how does it work? They find the guy with the flare, and he was like half burned and half replicant. Right. And he's like, did he burn himself? He's like, yeah, I guess. So. No, they yeah. Uh, did he? Yeah. Did he? Did he burn himself? Yeah. Or did he? He goes. It looks like he tried to burn it. Yeah. And he goes, or he tried to burn himself before it could get to him. Right. Yeah. Mm. I think it takes advantage of our. We have natural, that, yeah. <laughs> that matte lighting. It's not that bad. It's not terrible. It's not bad. It's not bad it's unless that, you know what one, you're looking at. It's the one at. scene yeah. coming up that just I just find really yeah. hilarious. But the guy is a, a, another shout pieces. out to behind the scenes. John Lloyd is the guy that did a lot of these matte paintings and everything. Who was famous for working with pretty much on all of Alfred Hitchcock's movies, starting with The Birds. The Birds. Uh, he did Earthquake, the, the Hindenburg. So you know he was he was an old man at the time. Yeah, but, I mean, but. And again, I think I the, just Eno Morricone's score that yeah, that just right here. <laughs> that, that, right there. there you go, yeah. Because <laughs> they're obviously standing on the stage. I'll take another J and B swig, y'all. Y'all feel me? I feel you. So again, again, this this and Look John at that Carpenter, hat, man. Look at that hat. I know, I dude. That oh my fucking god. hat. Why is it? Oh my nobody, god. Nobody I think he did that turn that on purpose. Honestly, <laughs> like you can see through my hat, can't you? Yeah, I'm showing this hat off, boy. Let's make sure everybody Look at knows that fucking you got that hat. El Chapo <laughs> hat on. <laughs> that's like no tw- El El Chapo. That's a that's a amigos. twenty gallon, dude. Oh, oh my fuck god. yeah, dude. That was one thing that always like I remember because my older sister was the one that passed this movie off to me. She was like, "You got to yeah, watch this." Yeah. But she said she goes because I think I already loved Big Trouble in Little China at the time. She's like, "You love Kurt Russell. This is scary shit. You should just be careful." But she's like, "But that fucking hat though." <laughs> <laughs> it's just comical. I'm packing for Antarctica. Only the necessities. Should I bring my ten gallon hat? Hell yeah. He probably, yes, he probably, he probably bought a seat for that hat. Man. He, probably, he probably did. I wonder if he probably like still owns. Kurt Russell probably still has that hat like in his house somewhere. I wonder how much that hat would be worth. If, yeah, if, we if he does it, off. that's yeah. probably a pretty awesome movie prop. Let's auction. Uh, yeah, yeah, that would be Let's awesome. I, it. I would gladly own that hat. Yeah, I would yeah. rock that shit. You buy any of this voodoo shit, Blair? Cherry, it's the Kurt guys, Russell's man. hat from the thing. Thank you, Google. They're falling out of the sky like flies. Thing movie hat. Oh my god, it's expensive. Is it really? What, how much does it cost? It's called the RJ from BaronHats.com. Is it the actual prop? I don't think it? so. It's probably a it's replica. It's just the... $12.50. $12.50? Oh, my God. That is not it. No, that but that's probably it. what the movie's based on. Honestly, it's probably like a... Well, really I've got old. an Indiana Jones replica fedora, but yeah. I didn't pay fucking twelve fifty. No, I mean, it. like, this is probably the real... It doesn't real... have Harrison Ford's sweat inside it. This is probably the real supply company that hat's based off of, or yeah, or whatever movie you know. prop company. Yeah, 
See, we all said uh, y'all got okay. McCready poured his J and B in the chess wizard thing. Yeah, but they yeah, got yeah. they got arcade games. They got an arcade. They got yeah. A, yeah, see, there's a pinball, pinball machine. But maybe somebody they had a pool maybe table. somebody there really liked to fucking play chess too. <laughs> but maybe that was his personal thing. Maybe that's what she he liked to do. Bitch. She bitch. She, she bitch. She said it was the first week of winter too. So he his just first got fucking there. week of winter. Yeah, chess machine. You like, lose one game. I mean, you look, fucking uh, sore loser. One thing I was thinking about when I was watching it is is there's a there's a pretty good. Uh, John Carpenter's always been really good at representing other races, right? Especially with movies where it's always like the white hero or something like that. Mm-hmm. People getting pissed off about diversity. It what? We all took a drink. drink. Uh, I did. He did. Oh, okay, he did. Uh, Sorry. And but he always. I mean, there's there's you know there's a, a, a I guess he's gay <clears throat> black dude in this film as well. But what it always what his characters always seem to be is like the roller skater. It's a main. It's a main white male hero who's usually kind of an idiot. Yeah, I but mean, real, he's, real like give a fuck. Yeah, well, like, and an, then they have a sidekick that's like a person of color right. who's like knows who's like. Well, well like in Big, Big Trouble in Old China is the perfect uh-huh. example of that. Yeah, Kurt Russell plays as he's John actually, Wayne, and I mean, he's actually yeah. not the hero. Yeah, yeah. he's an, he's a bumbling he's idiot, an anti-hero, right. yeah. and he's, yeah. he's not even really represented as a hero. The he real he's hero. Ki- he's kind of an anti-hero in this one as well. He's he's, he's a reluctant hero. I call him a reluctant a reluctant hero. And it's not even hero. He's just got to do what he's. He's just forced into a situation, and he's just trying to fucking survive. Yeah, Big Trouble in Little China. He's this John Wayne motherfucker, but he's it's a truck driver. But it's yeah. but it's Wayne that's the badass. Right, he, Wayne he, is the hero. He, yeah, he's the he's supposed to be portrayed as the Robin to Kurt Russell's Batman, but Kurt Russell's falling over his ass the whole fucking right. movie. Yeah. And Wayne's the one that's kicking everybody's ass. You right, know? yeah. yeah. It's, it's Which, nice, and uh, I think that's why that movie didn't go as too well either, is because people were expecting Kurt Russell to. To right. be John Wayne, yeah, and it didn't go down that way because that's what that's what John Carpenter does. He well, flips like, tropes. Why are you, why are you yeah. making he flips the tropes, tropes on yeah. people? Why are you making me not understand this guy? <laughs> yeah, why are yeah. you making me look? Hey, this, look, man, this I Chinaman? came. I came to the movie to feel comfortable. I come here to escape my boring ass yeah. life, and I want to know what's going on. I want to feel like I'm watching John Wayne. I can't yeah. feel like I'm a Chinese man. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I, I can't to identify this. with this I Chinaman. <laughs> I like watching the same stories every time, just with different characters, and I don't want no goddamn surprises. You understand? Jesus was a white man with a machine gun. Just <laughs> kill the fucking Orientals. <laughs> Get your fucking truck back. Get that woman back. <laughs> yeah. Make no, out fuck, with... no, fuck the woman. She's trying to. We'll see, that's another thing. That's another thing that was great with Big Trouble in China because at the end, Kim Cattrall, the girl that yeah. he's been like Kim hardcore. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he's hardcore up her all the whole movie and she's turning him down the whole time. At the end of the movie, once he's the hero and she's all like, God damn, I want to fuck you. She's like, what do you think? Let's go. He looks at her and he goes, Nah, nah. <laughs> and fucking walks out the fucking door like a boss. My like, hero. That's fucking cool as shit. It's my hero. Yeah, yeah, that's fucking hell yeah. Where's my truck? And this was this was this I guy think, in the back right there. I think he looks, this like, was he looks the, like a fucked up Ron Howard. <laughs> yeah, his, like, you mean like Clint Howard? He's like a monk. Clint, yeah, I was about to say yeah. Yeah, this is that's Trevor. Trevor he, he's, and he's the first dude. <laughs> he's the first dude that dies. He's about to go down. Oh is yeah. He? Yeah. They yeah, run it. They run it. Uh, Windows comes yeah. in and catches the oh, thing. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. how come nobody has like badass nicknames yeah, anymore? Like Windows. From, uh, Windows. What a cool yeah, name. Looks like cool Dreyfus name. from uh, Jaws. Looks like Damon. He, he looks like fucking that dude. Uh, looks like Damon. Brian Brewer comes in the bar all the time. He oh works, yeah, right. He does look like Ryan. He works yeah, at yeah. K-Bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. That looks exactly like. He fucking kind of looks like Ryan Brewer. That is Ryan. Yeah, straight up. See, that's just beautiful. I don't know. That's that's crazy grotesque, but I just think that's honestly. Strangely beautiful piece of artwork. It's still it's still that's gonna win somebody the Nobel Prize. It speaks it speaks to something in our brains. I think that, that CGI doesn't. That yeah. There's something Anytime about I see it, CGI in a horror it's film. It's unsettling. That's it, I can't look at that for a long time and not be unsettled. I can look at CGI. Right. CGI yeah. is not that great. Well, CGI doesn't scare me. If I see yeah. CGI monster you in a movie, CGI usually. Yeah, I'm well, out, and I don't. I people don't care. people don't give our brains enough credit, but we have we, we probably more we have a. But we have these we have these fucking supercomputers in our brain that run calculations all the time, and our brains are very 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 good at like pattern recognition, very visual, uh, very visual, right? And we're very attuned to physics and how physics work, light and shadow and all these things because we're we perceive reality. Well, even subconsciously, you may not notice it, but your brain is going, "That's not real." So if like, yeah, so something if something's only like if something's only slightly off, and by slightly I mean like. If they're doing if they're doing the CGI, there's a glitch in the matrix. Yeah, if they're doing like CGI and the physics maybe operates at at point zero two meters per second squared slower than gravity, then we pick up we're like, huh, that don't look right. Or if the or if the textures are a little too shiny for the light of the room, 
Like we we notice that and it really like, it takes well, it, us it's out. It's like a know? nanosecond reaction. Yeah, it takes it really yeah. takes us out. There's See, this guy Fuchs Fuchs is the second one that starts picking up on it. He's reading Blair's notes and he's like, Mac, something's not right. Like something's yeah. fucked up. Like Blair's onto something. He's not fucking crazy. He's but Blair has been exposed to it this entire time. I don't know. See, because Blair freaks out. He hasn't had his freak out. They're about to, that's about to actually happen. Blair, Blair's the only one that like, th- thinks about quarantine and well, stuff. Well, because so, Blair yeah. starts bashing up all the yeah. the yeah. comms units. So he, they can't get out. He yeah. Just, yeah, he goes, because if this yeah. thing gets to the mainland, we are we're fucked, fucked yeah. in a yeah. couple of weeks. Yeah, so he he's the one that cuts them all off. And that's another thing I love about this movie and uh, other horror films that I get drawn to. No uh, windows. The, Don't turn around, bro. The uh, just run away, man. Get out the room. Drop them keys, windows. Get out the room, window. Oh damn! That's just so creepy. Looks like something from uh, Venture Bros. Fall. So what? What I was? The, what I love about this? I love horror films where it's it's just a small cast. Yeah. There's not a lot of extra characters, and they're secluded somewhere, like the mist. I don't know if you're. Yeah, the, of course. Yeah, the they're, mist. They're trapped the, yeah. in so anywhere, Ooh. any movie where they're just trapped in a situation where like there's just no escape. That that fear or like, uh, of or like or like uh, Dawn of the Dead. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it, it, just, it goes back to what's scarier. Uh, this doesn't exemplify it as much as others, but what's scarier is the thing that they're, you're hiding from, or, or the people other you're people, hiding with. People you're yeah. hiding with. Yeah, are the people you're hiding with, and there is no escape. Well, that's what's scary about the zombies. The only thing that's outside of this is death, death, freezing. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's being trapped there with it. There is no escape, and just that's that finality of we're probably all gonna die. You know, and that's something that the human brain, I don't think, is capable of wrapping itself around. Well, it's like, it's like McGreedy's one of the only ones that realizes we're Damn. probably going to die, but we got to get this Man. thing done. Jesus. Yeah. That's why, yeah, he starts blowing everything up. He's There's like, fucking, I need to take a clip of that scene and play some what? like, like, this would always creep me out. That's that, that scream. That scream. Yeah. That was always so fucking unsettling. That inhuman scream. Yeah. Very alien. Yeah. He's not your friend anymore. Hmm. He was my friend, McCready. He has a really good. Like he has a really good response to it. And it's not yeah. cheesy at all. The the leader, the captain, <laughs> yeah. is breaking right, already yeah. immediately. Yeah, the, my the, friend, the military straight man. We gotta yeah. burn the rest of them. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're gonna burn them all. Don't burn them. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, we're gonna burn. Wait, them well, all. he's the guy who made the first kill in the entire movie. It seemed like. Well, then the guy and it was blew, a pretty amazing one too. Himself up. Yeah, uh, and now he's the one that's like, he's my friend. Help me. Yeah, what the fuck's going on? But I mean, it's, shit. Well, it, it, well, shit. I mean, well, if that happened. Well, that's the other thing is it shows is it sets these characters up as this character, and then whenever they start putting pressure on them, they turn to a complete. Yeah, like, what happens? The doctor is completely reasonable. Yeah. Well, who who's gonna keep their cool? Who's break, break yeah. Under pressure. Wait, what's it take for one man, you know, to just lose his shit? Hmm. Do you? I mean, do you know? We all think we would react like McCready or you know Doc. Well, or, that's what you. Uh, yeah, you but yeah, you like know, when you but, get pushed in that situation, some men just. I'm pretty sure their mind just, is not capable. And that's like McCready. McCready doesn't is not yeah. a hero or anything right. like that. He's just there doing a job. He didn't want to be there. Yeah. He didn't. He didn't try to make friends. That's probably what resonates about about these kind of movies. Yeah, you kind of want you want to put yourself in that role and, and believe that you can be a McCready that you man. would be that guy. But it's also good to be aware that you could probably be one of the other ones too. We all have that ability in us. Yeah. We all some Jordan Peterson stuff now. Yeah. Where's Blair? See. Yeah, where's Blair? He's not sitting outside with everybody else. He's doing studies. He's breaking shit up. He's trying to program that uh that computer for a cell model. Yeah, because yeah, he obviously does get taken yeah. at some point, but when? I mean, and I think he's I been think, doing tests on these these things for at least been dealing. If it's at a at an atomic level or a cellular so yeah, level, yeah, you know, then. But how 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 much how great was you know their resources up there? Like how. How much research could he really do? He was basically. Well, they had a computer. It was 1982, Tim. Yeah, they had two computers, and then fucking McCready <laughs> fucking poured scotch down one of them. Yeah, he fucking blew up the chest. Machine. First of all, that's a waste of scotch and a computer. It looked like mostly water anyway. 
I know it's so goddamn cold that ice probably never melts. And this is where he, yeah, he this is where he looks up and he sees that Blair's chopping up all the shit out of the helicopter so they can't leave. The one the the scene that always I always thought when that was the telltale sign, okay, this is when you know Blair Blair is one of them. After they seclude him out in the little hut. He was, can I can I get out? Yeah, he McCready's talking I'm to him better through, now. Yeah, well, he's talking to him through the door, the little slit in the door, and he goes, oh, shit, what does he say? He goes, watch Clark and watch him close because he was alone with the dogs. And then he comes back, and McCready talks to him again later, and uh, he goes, he doesn't say me. He says we. If you notice very subtly, he goes, we're, we, we something. I can't fucking wish I would have thought about it. When we get there, I'll, you'll see it. He doesn't say me in this very subtle way. It's like he says we, we. And I'm like, oh, that's, he's the thing now. Like, it's almost like the thing made a mistake. Yeah. And, and kind of slipped up a little bit. It's very, I mean, this movie is just, it's so subtle, but. The, yeah, they, it very, they're really, there's a lot of small things that I picked up on watching it a couple yeah. of times. And I just put it on the background and play around on my phone or whatever while I was doing it, but. It's definitely like there's a lot of little things that are hidden inside of it. It's just classic John Carpenter. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what he does. It's very smart. You, you probably find new things watching Big Trouble often. Oh well, then this too. It. Yeah, that's why that's why we're still watching this movie mm-hmm. is because every time I watch it, there's something new I can appreciate about it. Well, you know the thing about John Carpenter too is he actually. So I didn't know that. Well, it never occurred to me that this was sort of like an analogy for uh, the AIDS epidemic, right? But his, but like his biggest influences are actually. Uh, like society's biggest fears of the time, so assault on precinct thirteen. That was he took that. Attica it was, and all that. It was shit was it was so about uh, like the gang violence in, in um, Chicago and, and L A. at the LA, time, yeah. right? So it was like, and and he would read the newspaper and and whatever was really like just freaking people the fuck out. Like he would make a movie. He used it kind of sort of about that and. He That's did. He did yeah. several. Uh, I can't remember what he called. It. I think he called him his. Well, they his, live. They live was uh, you know propaganda. Yeah. 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 Oh, exactly. Mass media, uh, the, yeah, the yeah, research, the Reagan, Reagan era, and mm-hmm. yeah, the resurgence of the media telling you everything you need consume. to know. Consume, yeah, consume, buy. Uh, but yeah, he called. I think he said it was a trilogy. He may oh. have he may have done more, but he said the thing was the first part in his Armageddon trilogy. It was the thing, the Prince of Darkness, which I, I gotta admit I've never seen the Prince of Darkness. And then I want to say in the mouth of madness, I mm-hmm. think was the other one where they all, all three of them just, they end with pretty much the world's going to end kind of, you know, scenario, or you make up your own mind is, do they survive or don't they like, that's why I love about this in comparison. And I, I, I didn't know you actually taught me something, Zach. I didn't know that they came out the same fucking day, Blade Runner. And the thing. Yeah. I knew it was the same year. I, yeah, was, same I was born year. in 82, yeah, but yeah. I didn't know it was the same it's crazy, weekend. right? I didn't know it was the same weekend. That's and crazy. T- and they're two of my favorite movies. Yeah, exactly. Two of my favorite fucking movies. And uh, the it was the whole like okay with with Blade Runner, it was so open ended. You make up your own mind: is Deckard a replicant or isn't he? People are obviously still debating about that to this day. The end of this movie is: was Childs the thing or wasn't he? Because Childs disappears, Keith David's character disappears for quite a while, and yeah. McCready goes, "Where'd you go?" He goes, "I thought I saw Blair, and I went out to investigate." You just conveniently were missing. And they never. For yeah, and they never ever explained. Yeah, it. and then well, they test his blood though. The movie, yeah, but this happened after that, so he was missing for this whole time when they were down there trying to fight it, and he just pops back up at the end conveniently, and McCready's like, "Yeah, well, if we got any surprises for each other, I don't think we're in any shape to do anything about it." So the movie ends with, "Is was Keith David a thing, Wait, what, or, or wasn't he?" Wait, what was what was that? Did you, did you just uh, inject Blair with a sedative? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. trying to calm his ass down. How you doing, old boy? Put your faith in God. I want to. I was. I was watching it last night. Uh, I keep the subtitles on, and I want to say every time they say "thing," they capitalize it. Hmm. Really, any of the subtitles? Little thing, little thing I saw. He said, really? there, "There's this thing out there, and it capitalizes." Well, thing. It, is, it is the. It is a name. You know? Yeah. Well, the uh, the original was called the thing from another world. Well, you said the and mist. The you said the mist too. And in the mist, the uh, the painting that that what's his name's character? Um, who plays that guy? In the mist movie, uh, Drew Stusen is actually yeah, he's, he's artist. He's who did the well, thing poster? No, no, the, who played him? 
Yeah. He, he Drew Strizen no, did that. But, yeah. but the guy at the beginning the beginning of the mist, uh, he's in his house painting while that thunderstorm's the, happening. The dark tower. And what he's painting is you see the thing on the background. It's the thing in the background. On the wall, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. So the initial painting was a dark tower painting? The the one that he's sitting there painting. He's painting the, okay, guy, so the, the thing gunslinger. Was the wall. Okay. Yeah, the I thing the thing is there. on the wall in the I background. Was in there. Yeah. 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 Every great movie poster you've ever seen in your life, Drew Struzan did. Star Wars hook, the thing. Really? Yeah, all of those Classic. all of those iconic Harry Potter looking Indiana very, Jones. Uh, there's like there's like there's like, paintings. Like, there's like it's, twenty. It's not a, just two big heads. He actually would paint them between yeah. between like John Williams, Danny Elfman, Steven Spielberg, um, John Carpenter. Well, not just John Carpenter, but there's like a there's like twenty people who basically did all the best movies. Whether it was the film for or the yeah. the directing, the Steven Spielberg, the uh, the soundtracks, like they all. Did yeah. some of the classic movies of you know the seventies, eighties, nineties, and really. today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Tim and Burton, still, yeah, Danny Elfman, yeah. And they all use the same you know they uh, soundtracks. Use the same Morcone people and, and Sergio yeah. Leone, like. Well, Spielberg always uses John Williams. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Tim Burton always uses Danny Elfman. You know, I mean, because you they they pair up with each other. The movie industry of is a very, he used uh, to always love De Niro. Now he's all up Leonardo DiCaprio's yeah. ass. If there's a yeah. Scorsese movie coming out, Leonardo DiCaprio's in it. Yeah. The, the movie industry is a very uh, ancestral one. It's You do really well if you have good friends and they'll, they'll bring you along with all the... They'll bring you along the whole way. Drink all the blood. I mean, oh. I mean, I get that too because, yeah. like, you know, you, you need that assurity. They all, yeah, directors absolutely. always say yeah. if they cast the movie properly, ninety percent of their job is done. Yeah, you use your team though too. Yeah, you have to. Right. You bring the same people with you. Bring you. the same yeah. people. That's why John Carpenter. That's and, why it's really hard Kurt to break Russell in. Work it's together really so hard to break into. Yeah, because yeah, they get clicky. Yeah, very clicky. But then you get these movies like this, you know. I mean, this is clicky. Look, uh, uh, John well, Carpenter brings kind of Kurt Russell yeah, along, and then they so, right. Everything yeah. we started with in the beginning was all connected. Keith David was in several yeah. of these same kind of movies. Yeah. yeah. Well, you find somebody you like. I mean, I mean, fucking Johnny Depp is in every fucking Tim, Tim Burton movie. And you know. uh, Quentin Tarantino and uh, his love affair with uh, Samuel, Samuel L. Jackson. Jackson. Yeah, which I'm completely supportive of their relationship. Yeah. Oh yeah. Because uh, I love those movies. What? I'm just thinking of that. Post I made with the the face swap of the Jedi's and <laughs> that seemed to really bother a lot of people. <laughs> it really did. That's why that's why I tagged that. I was like I was like, how does this make you feel? People were like, oh my god. I mean, I think D Clover was like, who the fuck are those yeah, people? Was, <laughs> he was really weirded out. Like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> uh, if anybody doesn't know, it was a face swap with uh, they swapped the faces around on the prequels. Qui Gon and no, it was uh, it was uh, Qui Gon, uh, Obi Wan and Mace, right? It was yeah. yeah it, was all it was Mace, Anakin, so, and Obi Wan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There we go. And they face swapped, and it was it was hilarious. A little unsettling, but hilarious. <laughs> See, Windows is losing it. Windows just figured out. Barehanded punch the glass yeah. with no. no Windows blood. just figured out. Oh shit! I can't trust anybody. Who done it? So they have this whole case over here. Who done it? Of all these rifles. Yeah. yeah for no reason. Busting out a rifle yet? And so if you notice the rest of this movie, nobody well, ever has think, a rifle. You would think the guy with the handgun would have taken the guy out with the rifle. Everybody would have. Well, there's run like and four other rifles well, in that case. I never noticed this. Like, why didn't all of them go? Okay, everybody gets a gun. <laughs> like, everybody go to your own room, sit there, eat out of cans, hold a gun towards the door. But obviously, guns won't kill the thing. Right. But they don't know that yet. So, well, you also don't want to let them sit and assimilate because then good enough. If McGrady gets had, then he they can fly out. That's why they, that's yeah. why the other guy, the other pilot, is one of the first ones to get that yeah. goes. It's almost like it knows who uh-huh. to take out. You brought up that uh, that the the the, so the, the flamethrower is in weapons. there, and it's like, uh, well, like the the flamethrower is not just kind of obligatorily thrown right. in there; it has a purpose. Right. There's a none reason those, why they would have one. Except on the flip side of that, none of them shotguns have a purpose of being there. If they're in no. Antarctica... Yeah. I they, mean, if, they're they're if scared this was, of getting invaded by yeah. fucking... If this was well, in it, is, it is a U.S. base, though. So. But if this was like in the North Pole, then there it's would definitely be re- reasons because there's polar bears around. But in the South Pole, oh, there's wolves, fucking penguins. Maybe wolves or something. There's not nothing in Antarctica yeah. except penguins. penguins yeah. That's true. It's Antarctica, yeah. There's no reason to have a shotgun, yeah. let alone a case of like 16 of them. That doesn't make any sense. What do they think is going to happen? Oh wait, you know what? It's the Cold War. Soviets. Oh, there Soviets. you go. There we it's go. Still oh, early yeah. '80s. Well, they said in the beginning, it's like maybe we're we went to war with the Norwegians. Yeah, because you know yeah. they're threatened threat threatened with war most of the well, time. Well, and they, I guess period. if they know there was a, a Norwegian base right, close they, to yeah. them, 
hey, those guys go crazy and come. It's pretty much one, like international waters too. So okay, that makes sense. There was yeah. another speaking of the Norwegians. I was whenever I was reading it, uh, the guy in the with the gun. In the beginning, the guy shooting from the helicopter yes. is actually the producer of the film. Really, and he went on to produce uh, several other really like good hmm. movies like that. A lot of a lot of killer killer movies. Oh shit! I know you're talking about. It. I'm draw, I'm drawing a blank on his name. I don't want to say Dean Cundy, but mm. Dean Cundy worked a lot with Carpenter. I know I'm human. And if you were all things, you just attack me right now. Safety first, kids. McCready's yeah, wearing. Larry, Larry they're all J. wearing Franco. goggles. You should too. Exactly, like you yeah. fucking have goggles on. Yeah, he did. He did Jurassic Park. Oh well, yeah. Are you talking about Joe Johnson? No. Well, there's going to be several no, producers no, on no. any given film. Tango and Cash, They Live, Prince of Darkness, Big Trouble. What's his name? Uh, John Larry J. Franco. I'll be damned. Batman Begins too. Yeah. Hmm. I've never watched Prince of Darkness. I've never seen it. Yeah, I haven't oh, he did. A, he was an assistant director on Apocalypse Now. Yeah, so he was not a very good shot. But have you? I want. I don't know if anybody's done it before, but you ever seen Home Alone with blood? Oh yeah, it's it's like they take scenes where like they get smashed with the paint cans on the stairwell, stuff like that. They take scenes like make them realistic. Add it in. So like they yeah they CGI it in. So it's like they get hit with the paint cans. Kevin McAllister was head a fucking so, crushed, so, you know? psychopath. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like that. I always wanted. I've always wondered, like, what what would happen if in the movies, whenever they were about to kill somebody, or like somebody got a gun put to their head, and they uh, and they they actually just shot them at that point, and then the movie ended. You know, like it's always those scenes. Like in the beginning, it's like I'll shoot you. I swear. And what if you actually just shot them? <laughs> yeah. Why don't they ever just shoot them? Just shoot them. And it's like they don't have. They movie. don't have any guns in Home Alone, right? They don't exist in that universe. No, yeah. yeah. Oh, guns don't exist in... Mm-mm. They don't what, exist in that universe. Did that Steve Spielberg? <laughs> the Galaxy Uh No, no. no Spielberg's that were, universe. They went Spielberg. No, he definitely that's, has a gun. No, that's not Spielberg. Maybe what is that? John, John Hughes. Hughes. John, yeah, Hughes. John Hughes. John Hughes. John Hughes, yeah. Still got that ball in J&B there. He hadn't killed that thing off yet. He's still drinking on it. Well, I mean, if they have like six shotguns, I'm sure he has a case or two. Of <laughs> yeah. You better work that Photoshop, Aaron. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, this is just uh, little artifacts that I can edit out real easy. Oh, man, that hair. I kind of, it's, I mean, I he's got, got, he's got fucking, uh, I got the beard going on. I'm going to try to grow my hair out like that. He's got a that fucking part. Heather Locklear hair right there. <laughs> Tate Dick. <laughs> I got one sitting right over there. I, remember, I used to have one of those. See, this shot always scared me because this is like the quintessential <laughs> shot in any in any horror movie. Like, in the, oh my god! <laughs> yeah, look at that. You weren't bullshitting. Uh, snort I'm looking at a tape recorder that almost a replica of what McCready Gar- is Garrett on right Lindsay now. Gary Lindsay with Snorlax came through and uh, he brought us a bunch of tapes to, to give away for something. So I, 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 my mom gave me that for whatever reason, and I got some batteries for it and played some tape on it. Why is that guy holding just a beaker? He just grabbed that beaker real quick. Hmm. Is that assimilation fluid? Don't take my beaker. See, this is the one death that you never really know what happens to Fuchs, this Fuchs guy. He's well, a lot on, of it happens off screen, but yeah. Yeah, he dies off screen. And they never really explain it. Yeah, I love that. See, he's figuring it out. He's now the next guy that's yeah. figuring it out. We should prepare our own meals and only eat out of cans. That way, see, I'm not leaving a door open. He's leaving the door open. They keep they that. keep doing this. Well, that's what I'm saying. The shot before this, when McCready's on that little tape recorder, the way the camera was angled, it was like an over the shoulder shot almost. You know, in horror movies where you see that the char- the characters in the forefront on half the screen, yeah. but it's almost focused on behind them, like you're expecting something to come in off camera you know into the frame yeah he does that several times in this and it doesn't pay off but it's almost like that's like it just puts you on edge because it's almost like one of those things you're expecting and when it doesn't happen you get at ease yeah and then he does it again and then again and then bam then he hits you once you've gotten comfortable 
Well, it's really it's really working the horror of the unknown, which is something that movies now do a really terrible job at. They're, yeah. They're, and I, movies I, nowadays, I, yeah. they feel like they have to spill everything out for you. Yeah, well, they're totally gratuitous in their execution. Yeah. Uh, nothing really happens off screen, and, and it's really like uh, if if you're a student of film, it's really Hitchcockian to do fear to show the least the that you can. Yeah. The more yeah. you see of the monster, the less scary it is. The less it impact it has yeah. because you get you get uh, normalized to it well, over time. You, and whatever you come up with in your own mind is going to be way scarier, way scarier than whatever yeah. they try to show you on screen. And then also just the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Right? It kind of uh, it's unsettling. It resides in the in the, the uncanny valley in your mind and every time you think you're going to yeah. figure it out, yeah. they they jerk that that's away why, from I mean, you. That's why like that's why Jaws works. That's yeah. why the movie because jo- they never you don't ever see the shark till like, well, the end of the movie. Plus, and also, you like, deep I know what a fucking terrifying. shark looks like. Everybody knows what a shark looks like. So why do we need to show it twenty four seven? We yeah. don't. Let's it's just be, then yeah. become. It's not scary anymore. Exactly. Mist. We've been talking. We talked about the mist like two yeah, times. You don't it's, ever really see anything. It's shrouded. There's like interdimensional monsters. But you only well, the see, like, a tentacle the the, the, the thing that was great about the mist that it wasn't even necessarily about the monsters outside. Right. It was the paranoia that happened inside. It was the the humans were the real sure. enemy. It was how they just start turning against each other. It was that was the main problem in that movie. But yeah, but the criticism they still, start turning against each other. The criticism still of modern movies. Resides where they show too much. I mean, yeah, the more you show them, yeah. What's well, the mist? Had it had that? Uh, what, what did you call it, Aaron? The British ending. Yeah, uh, Just yeah, a super a very depressing. un-American ending. I love it yeah. so much. Well, when, I don't even want to give it away because I want people to watch it. When Frank so Darabont, fucking, when Frank yeah, Darabont came in and said they was so going to do that movie, he insisted on that ending. Yeah. He said, "I'm not going to make this movie and let you unless you and let me." Him. They fought him. They're like, eh, yeah. Eh. He said, "I'm not. I'm not doing it unless you let me yeah. do it." Unless you let me end it this way, and they were like, "Okay," and Stephen King has even come out and said they did an alternate ending, didn't they? I think, that, and it's that ending is different from the book, isn't it? Yeah. Well, in the in he said he thought his ending was better. In the book, they just drive off. Yeah, Stephen King yeah. said, "Shit, I wish I would have thought about that." He did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Said, was he was like, yeah, he was jealous. he was jealous. Yeah, he was like, "Fuck, I wish I would have thought about that." Well, that's a that style that style of uh, ending ending a film or a story without. A well, super just, happy resolution. Just on a, such a down note. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's really we're not used to it in America, but it's really cathartic. Honestly, it's actually makes you feel better than a happy ending because it, it <sighs> happy like, ending is the easy way to go. It's it's the easy way, and also like that's not how everything always ends. That's not how everything. Everything always ends. doesn't always have a happy. Do you ending. remember? It makes your, you feel crappy. What do you remember actually. better, your worst moments or your happiest moments? Yeah, the worst moments are the ones that stick with yeah. you. Or the the worst ones are where you learn from. When you're happy, you're complacent and you're not learning or observing. Well, the, the fairy tale you're, you're, yeah. you're safe. The when you when you're really scared or when you're forced into a situation like that, that's when you find out what you're truly made of Absolutely. and what you're, yeah. what you're capable of. That's very resonant. That's how you learn about yourself. And oh, that's 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 what makes a man. Oh, this is a man. That's why we like horror movies. In this in yeah. this movie or right here, this it scene, forces you to deal to with scared. the things that you don't want to deal with. Uh, in this scene, I think this is right where they first start and realize that the thing does not assimilate non-organic Or maybe matter. it burned that's, itself that's before you get to him. Well, he picked up those glasses, and I think it clicked when he's like, oh, this, yeah, it, it doesn't, couldn't. it can't assimilate non-organics. You know? It's like, mm, look at these glasses. So yeah. if it would have been able to replicate them, Fukes wouldn't have He wouldn't have had his glasses. His glasses would have yeah. been off. That's exactly. what, that's why I li- that's what I kind of liked about the prequel is they expanded on that idea. They did, yeah. They kind of brought something new to it and didn't just copy and paste yeah, so whatever like accessory you're wearing, he has no idea. Yeah, when I left there the other day, I turned my lights off. See, at this point, I would be like, no, we all stay together at all times. Nobody, yeah, goes, nobody splits up. Yeah. We go, to, we go to the bathroom together. Everything. Well, let's just let's just piss in this ten gallon hat. We don't, need, we, don't need, we don't need a bathroom. We just got a bathroom d- right here. Dig bro. a hole, just shit in my you head. You ain't you pissing in my head. Thing's twelve hundred dollars. Shit in my head, you guys. <laughs> this thing's twelve fifty on Amazon, fuckers. Ain't nobody pissing in my hat. This is where he first. I ain't taking that thing off. See, he's wheezing. See, okay, yeah. this is why I think like if you are the thing, you don't you might not even know it because he's yeah. starting to show signs of like oh he's wheezing and he's getting tired. He does another thing where he's nailing the door in a minute. And he starts going, oh, he's like grabbing his chest. Because I think it's right here where this guy's coming up. See, he looks out the window, sees McCready, and he goes, hey, guys, come here. And then he clutches his chest. 
Oh, he's being assimilated right now. I think so. Yeah, and he doesn't even know it. He hasn't gotten to his brain yet. Yeah, it's, well, it's, it has it's, gone to his it's, brain. It's, but his brain tra- is a uh, it's like a rep- replication. Yeah, so. it's traveling through his body right now, and he doesn't even know what's going on. Yeah. So I think I think that it, if you are the thing, you might not even know you're the thing. Probably won't because he doesn't even know that he's being assimilated right now, basically. And then I wonder if, like, once it does get to the brain, it takes over you immediately to where there's not even a moment where you go, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah. It's just you you were one person, now you're not. Yeah. Now you're this thing. And there's no way to combat that, and that's why it's so yeah. scary. Yeah, that's, there's, there's, yeah, you don't have a way to fight back against it. It's just you were one yeah. thing, and now you're another it's a, thing. It's an infantile helplessness. Yep. Yeah. This scene kind of sets a weird kind of set for the, uh, for the movie because the first time that the main character is the outcast, the one that you start thinking might be. And it kind of, it, it, I don't know if that's how it's really set up, but you, you, you kind of, as it, as you're watching a movie, you kind of, this is where they just uh, all start turning tie, each You other. get tied to, to this certain actor. And then whenever they're removed from it, and you're just left with the other characters. It's kind of weird. It kind of, yeah. it's kind of unsettling in a way. Yeah. Cause yeah, McCready has been our hero the whole time. Yeah. And when, so now they've all turned against him. And you know, if you're watching this for the first time, you sit there and you go, "Oh shit, maybe like, he is they, the thing. Maybe they, they, maybe they, they are so right against my hero right now." Yeah, exactly. Like may, maybe they're right. Maybe did we just lose our hero? But if you know Palmer, Palmer, we go to the blood test after this, right here. If we, if you go back, I always go back to this movie and go, "Okay, Palmer's the one." Okay, so when do I when do I notice when I think he's the thing? And he's right there. They're sitting at the door, and Palmer's got one of the guys with the flamethrower, the stoner other pilot. Uh-huh. He goes, well, they, maybe this is our best man. chance to kill him. We just open the door. We just blow him away. It may be your pet. And they're like, why are you so eager to let him in? And it's because he's right. the thing. He's, he's already the thing. Pa- Palmer's yeah. already assimilated at this point, too, the stoner pilot guy. And he's like, like, yeah, open the two pilots. Yeah, he's like, open the door, let him in. So Because it's not only just ever going to be just one person. There could be multiple at one time. So Palmer's like, yeah, let him in. So I think like he's already been assimilated too. Like it's one of those movies you go back and go, okay, we know this guy is becomes, but when do, do they drop little you subtle see how hints? Instantly they drop their weapons and everything. Yeah, they drop little subtle hints because Palmer might go, okay, maybe he is one of us. So yeah, I'm just going to do what he says right now. Hmm. I always weird. I rewatch this. The only person in this part that I know for a fact is not the thing yet. Is Childs Keith Davis' character? I still don't know if he ever does end up getting assimilated, but I know right now well, no one does. Yeah. And Windows, because Windows is obviously his death scene later. So there's the only two characters right now that I know. And then yeah, see, he starts to go basically going into cardiac arrest right here. <laughs> yeah, see, Palmer's going. Yeah, just relax, just relax, because if he's the thing right now, he's like, yeah, yeah, don't blow us up. Yeah, calm right. down. Yeah, the thing. <gasps> Yeah, oh, there it goes. Yeah. Set, grown. Yeah. Maybe that's whenever he finally got assimilated is right there. Yeah. yeah. If he had a weak heart, yeah, the thing might have gone, oh, shit, I kind of jumped into... A bummer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why this monster is very scary, too. It's, it's, only, uh, it's only like mode is self-preservation and expansion. That's all it knows. And expansion, yeah. It's not, it's not necessarily evil. It's no, not. A, no, it's, it's not an evil creature. Well, it's, it's just it's acting on instinct. Yeah, yeah. It's an instinctual survive thing. Well, I mean, you got to think it's tra- it was trapped in ice for God knows how yeah. long. Yeah, it doesn't and know then, that it's. And ooh, then it's, it needs to ooh, get here off. Comes, here it comes. Here it comes. To get, to get off the planet, it has to assimilate. This is the scene when I first, do. the first time I ever watched this movie. This was the scene where I had to pause it and go outside and collect oh, yeah. myself. I had to, I had to sit this outside for a minute and go, what the fuck did I just see? Oh, I don't think CPR is working. You should get out the paddles, bro. That'll work. Here's that Bettini magic right here. Oh, and we know Clark's not a thing either. Because McCready ends up shooting him. Yeah, he shoots him in the head. Oh, wait. We, we've made multiple swigs off of this thing, and there is not, not very, very much. It's not very good. No, it's not. <laughs> well, keep <laughs> drinking this Jameson. Yeah. Yeah. Here it goes. <sighs> it's on the third time. The rule of three in no, comedy three. and horror. The rule of three. Trick him twice, and on the third time, it happens. Bam. <sighs> This always gets me the notice. When oh, so his, his uh, arm tears off way up above. So I got to tell y'all about this scene. I know a little bit about this. So how they actually the just pulled the, how they actually just pulled the scene off is uh, the chest is actually a hydraulic mechanism. 
So, and the arm is actually a, 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 a very well-made arm. So it's lit, it's literally, it looks good because it's crushing an arm. Yeah. And how they get away with that is they actually have a double amputee this, with, this with a mask. Right. There's, a, there's yeah. the hole in the table. This, no, no, I mean, yeah, like this part effect. of his body. Oh, no, 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 you're no, right. no, no they did no, use they that a, effect they, right there. They use a double amputee. That's that's bubble gum and, and oh, yeah. tape and it's shit. Amazing. It's so cheap how they did that. It and looks, it looks like so that, amazing. It looks so good. I know, it looks so amazing. And I it's, like how we're gushing about it. Man, it looks good. Well, see, with the, when you see the smoke going up and everything, Rob Boutine, when he's talking about doing this. Do you see this? Do you see how close that fuse is? Okay, well, hold on, hold on. This is coming up in a second. Is when If you watch the commentary on this, if you watch the commentary in this movie at this point, but it, the commentary is Kurt Russell and John Carpenter, and it's so funny to listen to them talk. We're on fire. Wait, why like, did they just say we're on fire? Who just said that? Hold on, hold on. Okay, you can't rewind it. it. It's, yes. it don't, it's, yeah, don't rewind it. But somebody just said he did, we're no, on that guy, fire. Gary, but he's not one of them. No, because hmm. no, uh, yeah, he goes because McCready learned yeah. from the candle. Yeah. He goes, no, mm-hmm. let it burn for a second. Let it burn. Yeah. So okay, if you watch this with John Carpenter and Kurt Russell's commentary. You could tell these guys are like super buddies, and it's yeah, uh, yeah. their commentaries are funny as shit. And this part coming up, when you listen to Kurt Russell laugh Ooh. on the commentary, because this is both of their favorite parts. It, Ch- uh, Palmer is the one that says it when they all turn around and they see the head scurrying out the door. Yeah, yeah. He goes, "You gotta be fucking kidding me!" <laughs> and the w- the way he delivers the line, dude. Them little baby arms. Oh god, it's so crazy how they did that, man. That's just. Yeah, here you got to turn it up for that. This line, he keeps doing those over the shoulders. Look at that thing. Oh, here it goes. But when they filmed it, when they were burning it earlier, and all the smoke was filling up the room, the, all the effects they used for when the head was coming off of there was like completely toxic. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All this shit they combined and they oh, were yeah. like they were they were passing it's burning, out. It's burning rubber. Yeah, they were it passing out of the roof and, and they didn't yeah. think about it and they had to like a couple of them had to like have masks respirators. put on, yeah, yeah, respirators to catch the bricks. They're like we could have like totally like um, killed ourselves doing that shit. So that scene uh that scene with the chest the whole chest and the head sliding off and everything it was filmed at one time and they did that they made that I think uh, that was the first take, right? If I believe. No, no. Well, it was it was the first take. They made it because it's a, an elaborate effect. Yeah. And it took them like a week to make the whole thing, and then in making it, it has it destroys itself, right? Because the, the head yeah. pops off everything. Right, right, right. And uh, uh, so I can't remember which one of them did it, but some some somebody had like a, a bad face on or something like subtle, and John Carpenter was like, "All right." And he looked at Bettini, and he was like, he was like, great job, Mr. Bettini. Like, blamed him. He was like, well, let's do another take. And he was like, wait, what? We have to. And it's then he like, looked at take his, us like three weeks to reset He looked reset at his team. He's like, yeah, we got to do another take, one. and we have to do it today. So yeah. that's that was actually why. Really? Uh, that's actually yeah. why Bettini. Like, that's yeah, why he got sick. Yeah, that that scene. But that's why he got sick. That they shit did in. three weeks yeah. worth of work in one day. Yeah, and then yeah, and that's he pretty much somewhere about that. He pretty much had like a panic attack for like a few days. I think you're right. Yeah, because I think the second take is what we see. Yeah, because the second take something went off, and he was like, "No, you don't understand." Like, just set this all back up again. Yeah, is we have to make another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, you, I don't even know. Just, he's like, I don't even know. What Kurt Russell just blowtorched. It. Yeah, um, he's like, yeah. Of course, I don't, I don't even I can even do that again. Of like, course, it was <laughs> it was easier to do the second time because it was already you know the majority of that is like figuring stuff out, right? Figuring out the mechanism. Trial and error. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. The majority of the the work was done. It it they just had to bust ass and, and get it done that day. But and I think they did actually. They did. I yeah. gotta go back. Yeah, but yeah, Look that guy was a fucking <laughs> they, they, they literally caught lightning faces. in the He just. <laughs> And this is it, yeah. So after all that happened, this is where McCready goes, fuck all you guys. See when a man bleeds. Yeah, it's just blood. It's just tissue. But when that, when one of those things... See, they capitalize things. They won't obey. Jump away from a hot needle, say. See, yeah, and he shot Clark, the dog handler. See, this is probably the hardest part of the movie uh, to yeah. cut. It's like, why yeah. do you have to cut yeah. on the thumb? You gotta use your yeah, fucking what thumb. It, yeah. Every movie, that's always what they do. Like, why do your fingers? You're about to be like that's fighting That's your fucking... And, your, and then also, why such a big it, cut? Just this make a guy, This guy you does could, make a brick. Look at you this. could literally Watch do this. it anywhere. Yeah, this cleans the needle. He's he wipes goes, it on his jeans. <clears throat> but this one, you can see, you can kind of see it disappear into his Right here, right here. Yeah, oh, look at that. He just wipes the scalpel on his jeans like, yeah, it's sterile now. Yeah. 
Man, you don't have to. All you got to do is prick, bro. Ugh. You could literally cut it's yourself like anywhere else on your body. Why so you don't your, need that much blood, man. Why your thumb? You can tell it's a fake thumb right there. Oh, you yeah. squeezed it. <laughs> oh, I do. And you like catch it. Fruit. One, of the, one of the worst. If you were talking about a bad, uh, you were talking about a bad effect earlier, and you couldn't. It's when, no, when, the, when the blood does jump. Yeah. Notice. I don't ever really. Notice McCready's hand. Look at the hand when he's holding. Oh, it's the, a fake hand. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's yeah. Through it. yeah, no, yeah, it's so fake. Yeah, because the blood <laughs> has to squirt up through it. Well, yeah, when it cuts to it, and again, this is a rule of three: windows is clean, next guy is clean, Palmer will be the one. I hope we're not like ruining this for people. No, somebody's watching this. I'm sure they've already seen it before. You know, they better. We that's didn't, a that's a. We didn't do a spoiler. Alert, alert, no, we did. We? Fuck that. Yeah, we're not going to do a spoiler. We've already talked about it. It was 1982. Yeah. We've already. We, you've had 30. Yeah. Yeah. Six years. Uh, yeah, the statute of limitation is expired on this I won't movie. even spoil or anything that's five years old. So he just did Windows. So he goes, yet. okay, Windows is good. Go pick up that flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'd be like, ooh. Like, because you don't know. They don't know. Like, yeah, if they you, would you, know you, if they're the thing. Just get away from being and also torched. The, I would be uh, skeptical of the fact that Windows didn't have his glasses on. I'd be like, hmm. Well, he was wearing shades. Not, I don't. They probably right, weren't right. prescriptions, but yeah, he was. Yeah, but he was always wearing them. So he was. Poor windows. Let's try the dock. He goes. That makes you a murderer. You know, Copper's the yeah. See, they show you close ups on his hand a couple times to get you used to that shot. Uh huh. So that you you're ready for it. So we're going to have to keep, pregame this shot. Yeah, they keep. Not, we did not do a good job. On yeah. <laughs> so they show it a couple times, so you re, you're ready for it when it happens. See that yeah, that's yeah, what yeah. It, I think that's the fake hand. That right was there. that was a very fake. Hand. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. he's holding it like this. Yeah, like he's yeah. holding the edge of it. It's kind of. So they're like you're a murderer. You fucking okay now Palmer and here it goes. See the way Palmer's little, look. Let's get a little face. sound. Let's get a little sound real quick. Yeah, let's do some sound right here. Thank you. Oh, shit. And they shift the floor to make the blood yeah, look like blood it's run. running. Because it's running. It means it has yeah, a life yeah. of its own. Right. It was the yeah. blood was scurrying away. I mean, can you imagine that blood gets everywhere? You're not going to be able to kill it. Untime, yeah, untimely. Yeah, they're all fucked, basically. That blood, they're going to find where that blood went. I just want to hear that line when he was like, all right, you're next. <laughs> oh, shit. And they, and they get progressively bigger, too, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. Almost like it's like an animal getting backed in a corner. It has to become more and more aggressive. Uh -huh. You fucked. So, yeah, so it, it gets... Oh. Oh. This this is kind of doesn't look that great. It's kind of he's, it's a little, like he's really floppy. Around. Yeah. yeah, it's flopping around. It's obviously a dummy. Well, it doesn't yeah, it doesn't obey the the physics of yeah. the weight. His neck would be gone. Yeah, like, his neck's already been stabbed. Neck, yeah, yeah, the body would have gone limp yeah. and been hanging. It's still scary as shit <laughs> looking though. <laughs> And then how does his body flip over? Like you notice, that he hits the wall and then flips back around. And that's just crazy too. They're doing flamethrower stunts in such close quarters, yeah. right there in a closed room, a closed set, right there. Look, I mean, the you see the actors' faces. Yeah, those aren't stuntmen. They're all in there. These are movie making mavericks. That's, don't don't question it. Don't judge it. That's that's why it's that's why it's one of the best. That's always if you always. That's what every person in a movie you ever see. It's and on fire. A, yeah. Every time you see a, per, a person Shit, on fire, why did why it explode? We threw a stick of dynamite. At oh, it. okay, okay. Every time you see somebody fully engulfed in flame in a, a movie, that's a real person. You always see them drop to their knees, hands up, and then fall yeah. flat on their yeah. face, just like that he did. Yeah. That's the stuntman move. Mm -hmm. Well, I fall down face first, and then they run in. Every time you see that happen in a movie, you'll notice they cut away immediately. Right. They drop to their knees, face they, first. They rush in with a, It'll always cut immediately to yeah. some other shot because that's when they rush in with the extinguishers and put them out because they can only be on fire for like, like 30 five seconds. Like five seconds. Be not, even, not even 30, yeah, like yeah. five or something. Yeah. Because they can't breathe. They have to hold their breath. Right. 
And they have a lot of clothes on, like in that. You can actually hide. Yeah, you they, can well, sometimes they can, they can, you can, they can hide. protect themselves with the fire, yeah. but if they have to hold their breath because well, they breathe in, they're yeah. breathing in fucking fire. fire. Right. <laughs> well, the beauty about uh, having like an Antarctic thing is they have a heavy coat. You can actually hide a oxygen respirator in there if you wanted to. Here. No, I was saying. No, I'm, I'm gonna take a little little well, shooting shoot of this. Oh, okay. I'm just I'm just doing a little clean. He's gonna, clink, he's gonna clink, neck clink the JMB. JMB. Neck it. Neck it. Hashtag, we just coined that term. Hashtag naked. Naked JMB. Necking. I love this. He's, His line coming up, too, is probably the, 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 the they're all just pointing everything yeah. at the last dude. <laughs> he goes, I know you gentlemen Give have been through a lot. Yeah, but couch. I don't know if you're tired of this fucking couch. <laughs> yeah, you got to turn it up for this line. I know you gentlemen have been through a lot. And when you find the time, I'd rather not spend the rest of this winter tied to this fucking couch! (laughs) (laughs) We're laughing at this guy's pain. I know. (laughs) Yeah. It really is interesting that he's kind of the most broken individual, but, yeah, he's, but he should be the most the, strong and stoic. Well, I mean, but he didn't, what's the flip? It's the flipping. Of, it's a reversal yeah, of roles. Right. What what he does. But in he didn't movie. necessarily like panic and turn into a coward or anything. Yeah. Uh, he, he just, just he wasn't. Really got, he was. Oh, he no. didn't live up to what he. Yeah. He never expected to be in a situation like this. You know. Yeah, because even in the beginning, they kind of built him up as like he's like, oh, you're gonna shoot somebody, captain yeah. or something. It's like yeah, he's the like, guy like, goes, he's oh, a cowboy. El Capitan got to yeah. use his pop gun. Yeah, right. nobody was making fun of him for being a cowboy. or None of those guys ever respected him. Yeah. They probably hated See, him for are, having to be there. Yeah. Why are they even split up? All right, we just did the blood test. That means everyone in here is safe. Like, let's so all this, stay so together. Let's split up. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Come on, y'all. This is where they realize, yeah, Blair's been forming a spaceship underneath the ground out yeah. of all the helicopter parts. And that was like that was another twist. Blair was the one that was going crazy, but he was the one they should have been listening to. Mm-hmm. And then he ended up fucking being turned. That's kind of tragic for that character. Absolutely. The guy that knew how horrible that would be uh-huh. ended up becoming it. Well, maybe that's why that guy had a heart attack is because he tried to fully assimilate him and it didn't work out. He was, or maybe he was him. he was rejected. Yeah, his body was weak. Mm-hmm. He had a weak. He obviously had heart problems and right. a weak, had a weak body. <clears throat> maybe that's what and it was. And that's why. But he could get the other people. Yeah, but Blair had the diabetes. Because if, if the, if the thing would have replicated that guy, well, <laughs> Blair has diabetes. Well, <laughs> well, Blair had the diabetes. Come on now. Well, he's gonna be slowing down here shortly. Then. Huh? Well, yeah. They, they try to if if it would have been able to replicate that guy perfectly like it should have. Maybe he, he a, wouldn't have got into that cardiac arrest. Yeah. Hey dog. Hey. He would have been able to hide amongst check, them. Check this yeah. out. Check us because out. Theory he, time. Because the guy had. I remember he was going to have a heart attack anytime soon. And then he was like, anytime. "Fuck!" And he got a, accidentally got exposed. Yeah. I, I propose this theory. Maybe he had a pacemaker. You know the thing can't incorporate Ooh. non. No, it's true though. You, you know, like a like a fan fiction. Yeah. Novel. You, well, I mean, you know the thing cannot. He cannot incorporate non organic. Yes, we are. I mean, we are embellishing. You're but. not wrong. You're not wrong. 1982. How how how? Uh, we had pacemakers. Had pacemakers. Yeah. yeah, but how bleep 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 how. Common were they? Uh, the quiet, I mean, you're not wrong. It's yeah, yeah. a good idea. It's mm-hmm. a good theory. Mm-hmm. I like that. I'm a theory crafter. You're yeah, right. What's I up? Mean, but I mean, the guy evidently, evidently had problems. He went into cardiac arrest. You know, my theories are usually right. Whenever the thing, I guess, was going through the bloodstream, he stole parts in the helicopter it, and yeah. the spaceship. He just whoa. But if it's smart, you would think he the it would have noticed that immediately when it got into him. He would have, I guess, and it would have because. I would assume it could probably like lay dormant, maybe in somebody for a while. Well, obviously it was in the yeah. eyes for God knows how. Yeah, it could do, I don't but, re- it, I, but it could get into somebody's bloodstream and do you lay dormant, in, in that, in, and then the, wait, uh, and then wait for the in the prequel. Do you remember if it was uh, how long it was in there? Was it hundreds of years or was it soon? No, it was thousands of years. Thousands. I mean, oh, when it was crashed and yeah, excavated. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They said the backlash. Yeah, it could have been under twenty thousand years. I think they say. Well, I'm glad but that's why he said here. that's why McCready starts blowing everything up. He goes, "That's what that thing wants. Oh, here's it that. wants to go asleep in the snow and wait for the rescue team to show up. Oh, yeah, and bring yeah. it back that to Earth. He's like, so we need to heat things up. This, ding, ding. yeah, that's very John Carpenter. At the beginning of this movie, this is the first thing you hear. Immediately creeped me out. I'm sure. I'm sure him and Ennio Morricone uh, collaborated oh, a little yeah. bit. Well, that theme, that theme right there is very uh, heartbeat esque. You know, yeah, yeah. Dun, it's, very, dun. it's very heartbeat-esque. It's, dun, it's dun. almost like 
like Jaws, like kind of yeah. Jaws, John Williams thing was so simplistic. Dun dun, dun dun. But every time you hear that, it, it you start dreading it. You didn't have to hear the shark. You didn't, or you didn't have to see the shark. You just heard that theme, and you started getting scared. And, and that kind of yeah. that kind of resembles dun, dun. that that heartbeat, like stress. Yeah. What's this really? When you're those, scared and alone, really, all you hear is it's really pulse. long pauses, and they they put you on edge because it's like you're hearing dun dun. It's like a fast, yeah, fast the sound, and then it's that long, yeah, dun dun, dun dun, dun dun dun. dun well, no, even here it's, it's more, but it's, it just builds the tension. Yeah. He goes, don't you see? It wants to go to sleep. It wants to wait for the rescue team. The cold won't kill it. Yeah. The cold won't kill it. Just makes it hibernate. The only thing that'll... Yeah, it wants to go to sleep in the snow. The only thing that can kill it is fire, because you have to kill it's it on the well, I mean, that's Well, they found it. They found it a ways away from the snow. It purposely crawled out there. And yeah. and that's what... And every time they get one, like, uh, what's his name? What was the one that died first? The guy with the hands? Donner? Uh, Bennings. Bennings? He, uh, Donner. <laughs> the Donner like the Donner family. party? <laughs> um... He he ran. He was they, every time they run out to the snow, like they're it just was trying, trying to, to run out outside. Disappear. It got but exposed get, and tried to run out. I mean, I guess. Do you think that whenever they assimilate something, they get the smarts of whoever they assimilate? I think so. That is like because they like, got the doctor and the doctor didn't run out to the snow. Well, he started it, making if, a spaceship. If, if it assimilates you, yeah, it had to have his knowledge mm-hmm. exactly to know how to do that. How else would it know how to do that? Yeah. So I think on a, it's a molecular level. That's why the fire is the only thing that kills it. Because you have to kill it on a cellular or molecular level. Bullets aren't going to kill it. Yeah, It'll just fucking get up and walk away. You right. know? That's why McCready goes, we got to fucking Torch heat, heat things, burn things everything down. Yeah, heat yeah. things up. Because yeah, that blood is still running around somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That thing wants to go to sleep in a couple months, weeks, you know, uh, rescue team will arrive, find it, and it'll get back to the mainland. It's just like, and he tells him, he's like, we're not making it out of here alive. We gotta yeah, because they're gonna torch their shelter yeah. and then they're gonna be out in the snow. Yeah. And they're gonna fucking die. We're gonna die, but we gotta make sure that we kill it first. That's 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 one another one of those things in this movie. It's would, complete... would you be able to do that? Would you be like Hell okay, yeah. freeze it? Like you gotta go. Okay, we're gonna die anyways. Apparently, freezing but to it, death isn't, it, isn't it, the worst way to go. You just go I crazy. would like to freeze to death. Yeah, you, you just, just kind of go to sleep. Yeah, you just kind of go to sleep and you. No, know, it's like, actually much more torturous than that. Well, no, I know it's not that simple. But but what they're saying is okay. Against hypothermia, you actually end up you, feeling really hot, and you end up taking off your clothes. Yeah. It's actually pretty bad. But anyway. yeah, you feel like yeah. yeah, it goes reverse on you. I know, but I, I I wouldn't be able to do it in in my mind. But if I, you if you know, okay, we're not making it out of here alive. See, I, I, I wouldn't. Our, I wouldn't. Last, our last act is is <laughs> let's try our best to kill this thing. I don't because know there's there's no self preservation is out the window at this point, right? Even though that is the basis instinct, you would think that you get down to two, three, they may like, okay, fuck it, I don't, I can't do this. But blow everything up. You're gonna get hot. You're gonna have a good time for a couple of hours, maybe a day or so, while everything burns. And then when everything burns out, you're going to freeze to death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd rather freeze to death than get taken over. But I've been. I'd probably be. Well, a that's, where the, that's where the that's where the hero aspect comes. Yeah, because yeah. you kind of. But does that even make you a hero? Or it's just self preservation. Like I'm just trying to. No, I'm trying saving, to live saving, as long as saving, I can no, until you're I humanity. Die. Well, yeah, by not being assimilated. Exactly. I'll yeah. kill myself before I let that happen. Yeah, but again, if you're the thing, if it lays dormant on you. Is he strapped up with TNT or yeah. dynamite? Yeah, yeah they've got yeah they got dynamite sticks all over. Oh, he's, yeah. got this, he's got the J and B cocktails. <laughs> yeah, that's where all those bottles went. <laughs> yeah, it's all those that motherfucker did have cases of that shit. Yeah, he got the Molotov J and Bs, man. All right, I'll take this job, <laughs> but I better get two cases of J and B. If I'm gonna be out there, I'm gonna be drunk. Just or Indian Brooks, man. Fucking. Fucking Kurt Russell saved humanity with J and B. Cheers to that. Hey man, it's easier to throw than a grenade. Obviously, the Norwegians couldn't throw a grenade for shit. Well, again, Null, went, uh, Null's right here. The the black character he dies off screen. What? Yeah, right, no, not, you mean, not, you not, mean, El, not El Capitan. No, you mean rollerblades? Yeah, Nulls. Or yeah, 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 roll, yeah roller skates. Yeah, yeah, he he dies off screen. We never know. We never know how he dies. We're about to see him die by Blair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blair puts his fucking fingers oh, yeah. in his... Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
See, that's about to happen. But Nalls dies off screen. We don't. We don't. We never know how he died. Huh? He, he just falls that. behind. Yeah, he just went off by him fucking self. He probably just froze to death like a dumbass. We'll see. I know. Yeah, it's him. Anytime in a movie, like, oh, my flashlight's not working. <laughs> oh, yeah, this time straight over. kilt. <laughs> oh. Now you got the diabetes too. But that's kind of cool. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a. He just that's, sinks right into his. That would yeah. require so much. He's force. immediately assimilating him already. Oh, I look at Wilford Brimley a little differently now. I know he's kind of scary. He's really affecting people with diabetes, man. I mean, Most people nowadays probably wouldn't even recognize that as Wilford no. Brimley because he okay, doesn't have so his mustache. Yeah. Nalls is still alive right now. Yeah, I think Nalls hears something, and he. <laughs> <laughs> That that always reminds me of Beetlejuice at the end when Alec Baldwin pulls his face out uh-huh. trying to scare him. Oh, That's yeah. what that looked like. <laughs> see, you see him walk off, but you don't see what happens to him. You hear a noise, and then uh, McCready notices. But it's just another... That's like, I think this would make three characters that died off screen in the film. No, not all of them die. Well, they get assimilated off screen. So the or you either die weird. or get assimilated. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. kind of that's that kind of throws. Well, it Fuchs out. died off screen. He's about to die off screen. That kind of it throws it. And you know how the typical trope is: if you don't see them die, then they didn't. They're die. not dead. Yeah. This this whole parasite thing completely flips that on. It flows it. Yeah. So this you whole don't know movie, what to can, think. this whole movie is is built around flipping the yeah flipping this the trope. That's what John script. Carpenter did, man. Yeah. And then and he still put humor in it somehow. It's gonna Kurt Russell still has like a a great eighties. Every '80s horror action movie, they always have a great one-liner before they kill the the bad guy. These aren't even that cheesy, though. No, it's not cheesy These at aren't all. Cheesy, it's awesome. Horror. Well, it's like you know Ripley, get away from her, you bitch, or you know <laughs> all that kind <laughs> of stuff. Yeah, fuck you too. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what if uh, what if Rocky was a thing? Could you kill him? Fuck yeah, I'd choke him out. I'd stomp on him. You can't choke out the thing because it would just oh, assimilate yeah, your arm. There, totally it, comes. On fire, there it comes. Oh, I'm sorry, Rocky. You'd be sent on fire. <gasps> oh, shit. This is the fastest you've seen him move the whole movie. Yeah, huh? that's a really yeah, good Yeah, it's pissed. Too. And it doesn't it's even like have to act that way. I mean, if it knows that he's the only one alive, why does it need to be doing all this? He's not the only one alive. Oh wait, that's right because it didn't know that. Because what's his name? Um, Childs is out there. Childs is yeah. out somewhere. I have the Tom McFarland did a bunch of tour creature oh, toys. Yeah. I had that toy had somewhere. That toy. Not a toy, but I you know. You would you would you would enjoy uh, nerding out about toys with Byron. You ever talked to Byron about all this, about toys oh, about yeah, figures oh, and shit? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a lot of Tom McFarland stuff. Oh, he's giving stuff. birth. Turn it. Can you turn it up? This is great. Right here. <laughs> Fuck you too. Fuck you too. <laughs> How do you even survive that? You run. Yeah, you, yeah, run. you run and jump whenever it uh, whenever it blows off. He's Kurt they, Russell. He's Kurt Everything Russell, goes yeah. in slow motion. Dude, have you been paying attention? Did you <laughs> see you that hat? <laughs> did you see that hat? He did he take that? Did he take right. the hat with him, or did Look, he leave? He right. left the hat. I think right. it was he t- left that damn hat. Now you're right. I saw the hat. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Down this man. <laughs> <laughs> that hat will protect it for anything. That's gonna be the cover photo of this episode. It's gonna be that hat. Just him, just him and that hat, man. <laughs> just having that hat. Oh man. Uh, <laughs> damn. You know it, it was. Well, it was I so think, hilarious. Again, still has one bottle of J and B left. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just blew up the whole fucking camp. Has one bottle of J B left still in his hand. Didn't uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, that John Carpenter revived uh, his career. Right, because when he was, yeah, Kurt Russell, because when Kurt Russell was a young man, he was a Disney. He was no, a Disney yeah, actor. He, right. I wouldn't say he revived his yeah. career. He he did just start off as a child actor in Disney. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like I don't think he did much in between. He didn't become an action hero until yeah. John Carpenter. Right, right. Escape from New York. Big Escape trouble, from blah, New York blah, blah. is like, right. and then Tangled. That's Cash what he did as, a, as an adult. Later. Yeah, oh, there he yeah. is. Hey, Charles. Let's not forget uh, Captain Ron. Captain Ron. Ron <laughs> <laughs> made it. That's one thing that Carpenter and Tarantino have in common is they like to use actors that aren't necessarily in vogue at the time. 
Yeah, they Tarantino they, did that. Like Tarantino brought back John Travolta. Dude, well, yeah, oh yeah, he revived. Yeah, you were yeah, talking he, about reviving yeah, a revive, career. Yeah, 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 reviving yeah. careers. So. And honestly, and, and Tarantino didn't revive Kurt Russell's career, but Kurt Russell's performance. No, no, in John Death Carpenter. Proof, John Carpenter revived but, no, but, his career. But, but I'm saying uh, Kurt Russell's performance in Death Proof got him. Oh back. yeah, fucking a that was yeah. so great. Yeah. That I was agree. so awesome. He that was such perfect casting, and then of course, and then Hateful Eight. Yeah, I was so sad when he played. Spoiler alert: a lot of people died. He just movie. starts like everybody projectile <laughs> vomiting. <laughs> yeah. Don't don't give it all away. We might do it later. Guys, so iconic. This ending. We'll do that later. It's so iconic. We got any surprises for each other? Even shape do anything about it. <laughs> boom boom what do we do let's drink what are you here for a little while let's see what happens see what happens Childs, you can freeze to death quicker because well, you're sweating. Well, they're they're alone. So if Childs was the thing, he would be assimilating him right now. Bum, bum. If they're the only two there, the thing's got you alone. Or maybe the thing would be like, I don't need to assimilate him. I just will sit here and I'm wait, hang tight. wait yeah, and die. Just hang tight, yeah. So it's, yeah, hang tight and freeze, wait for the rescue team. So that's why it's... And they're going to take, the, take those bodies somewhere. It's right? open-ended. Yeah, even if they're dead, they're, they're going to cart them back. So this is an open-ended movie. Like, does it come back? Yeah. yeah, it's probably the beginning of the apocalypse. Bum, bum. It is because John they Carpenter's did a, the thing. They did a five-issue limited run. Dark Horse Comics did of of a follow-up to this. It was a, and I have them at my house. I will let you. Oh, all, really? I, will, I will let y'all borrow them hmm. if you would like to. It was a five-issue limited run by Dark Horse, which was what happens after this. Mm-hmm. The artwork isn't great, nah. but it's kind of a cool story. It, according to those comics, Childs was 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 okay. Was, that's why that's why you, yeah. you said it. Like yeah. That, yeah. So according to those comics. Yeah, yeah. yeah which I are, consider like fan fiction, uh-huh. right? But according yeah, to the according yeah, yeah. to that comic series, I love that though. Childs was a thing, and they rescue him. They take him back to some like little military base, and he assim- starts assimilating everybody. It's just the same thing again. Yeah. Yeah. It it just repeats itself. Dark yeah. Horse. Dark Horse makes a lot of. Uh, they do a lot. Of they stuff do a like lot that, of right? movie comics. They did. Yeah. They did before. Before Aliens, Marvel, before Marvel Predator. got a hold of the rights for the Star Wars comics, They're Dark Horse, Star Wars extended. Yeah, they did all that. Uh, and they, I have they, a, they do all the Alien and Predator. I have stuff. a. I have a Superman versus the Aliens limited run by do Dark Horse. Oh, uh, Superman versus. I like. I like the Batman versus There's Predator. Bat, bat, yeah, those I've are got that fucking too. awesome. Yeah. Predator shows up in Gotham City and so, Batman fights him. Yeah. While we're here, do you want to talk about like what we'll do next? Yeah. Do you, I mean, do you, uh, yeah, that's I that's a good, good cap. Time. I mean, that's a well, good cap. Well, if off. anybody is actually listening to this, I would say, what do you, they want to want us right, to do? Right. We could probably ask. We'll probably put out a, we'll put the, out The hey, three man. people that are listening right now, I'm still, with five people, I'm still in Aaron Barnhill's catchphrase. I'm going to say the five. Five of y'all that are listening right yeah. now. <laughs> What do y'all want us to do? I mean, I, I'm down to come back and do this a million times. I don't yeah. care. Yeah, let's make it a party. I mean, if you guys are actually going to listen to this commentary on while watching a movie, you, say, you tell us. Blade Runner, Big Trouble, uh, I mean, I Shining, wanna, the Shining. Yeah, the Shining. The Shining would be good. The Shining. I kind of want to I kind of want to stick with this theme. Yeah, I want to I mean, do. The Shining podcast would be like four yeah. hours long. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally I do I really want to stick with these these icons, these these, yeah, these let's do these classic classic I like these, these horror movie icons. Let's, it let's do have to be hey, horror. Y'all, y'all, so if y'all, 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 let's do tremors. Any, let's do tremors. tremors, tremors, tremors. All right, let's do That's tremors. It. That's it. Next month, I'm down. I'm gonna dress like Reba. <laughs> Reba, I'm Reba. Reba. I'm Reba. All right. Okay. All right, well, so. if y'all would have me back, I love. I did this. Oh, we're gonna. Have if y'all want to have me back, I'd well, love to do it. Let's did you? Did you have fun tonight? Of course. That's a good time. I hope I said everything I wanted to say. But yeah, if y'all want to do it. Yeah, for uh, sure. Yeah, awesome. Well, Absolutely. hey, thanks everybody for if you have stuck around. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> if and, you're still uh, listening, I hope you've enjoyed our rant over the, the yeah. movie the thing. Uh, we're gonna try to we're gonna try to diversify our content a little bit. This is something we're gonna try to do every now and then. Hopefully, like maybe like once a month, maybe semi monthly type of thing. Maybe more if it picks up. Uh, this is in addition to our main podcast, where it's kind of a long form conversation. If you guys have any other ideas that you might want us to do. Something you think is really interesting, you know, just let us know, and we'll 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 consider all things. 
All things. All right. Well, thanks, Tim. All things considered, I think you, that might be quite already. Y'all might need to. NPR might see y'all. Hello. <laughs> I hope NPR. Hello, you're listening to All Things hey, Considered. NPR, please. On on today's episode, we have Tim Postlewaite. We're gonna have to whisper the next See, episode that Tim, we do together. Tim, Tim, you gotta use your NPR voice. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, well, this thank you very much episode. for listening. Thank, <laughs> hey, Tim, thanks for uh, thanks for coming, and uh, and everybody, thanks for checking out. I'm Ages sorry for podcast. yelling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry that I got so heated earlier, you guys. Uh, that was a violent action, Tim, and I'm going to. Uh, I apologize. Micro- I apologize. That was a micro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, All right. You, All right. well, thank you, guys. You guys have been listening to A to Z podcast, uh, Thursday's movie night. We appreciate y'all coming. We'll see y'all next time.